YouTube as well. Hope, uh, hope you're doing good, warm-hearted American girl. YouTube stream is working. It's about to work. There we go. Okay. Oh. Um. Man, that chat looks a little weird, right? Uh, I'm probably not going to fix it, though. Who cares, right? All right, so we're just going to ha hang out for a minute as Penn Center uh, introduces his stream. Critical? Oh, nice. So, yeah, uh, we're not going to start on it quite yet because uh, Penn Center is still uh, doing his... Uh, Oops, hit his like a uh, intro stuff, but this will be our, our first question that we look at. If, and if anyone else from chat is gonna, uh, has a question or critical, if you're gonna have more, this is a great time for it because we're gonna need a good stream of questions here if we can help it. Oops, not that one. Hello? Hello, Don. Hi, Don. How are you? <laughs> I am good. How are you? I'm doing really well, thank you for asking. I'm pretty freaking stoked about today. Do you want to let the viewers know what's up? Yeah, so uh, we are going to be tag teaming math problems. So if anyone in chat has a question, please uh, let us know in chat or in either of our discords. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we, we got one to get started with, but let us know. Uh, by the way, Bob says, yo, done. <laughs> Yo, Bob. He says it's going to be hard to figure out which chat to go into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel that. Okay, I'm going to get a writing tool ready to go here. Hello, Yuri. Hello, Caden. 10 factorial? Oh, it's not mental math. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, it's been a minute since I've used uh, Scaladra. That's <laughs> plus on, you might have figured it out. I'm gonna have to add I'm gonna have to add a little <laughs> a little color texture here. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> uh D3K, thanks for, for the follow. Ten ninety times eight. No, I I I <laughs> we, oh, we can okay. wolf from alpha it. Kaden. This. Next, right? Here we go. It's that. 3,628,800. That'll work. <laughs> okay. But yes, technically, if you have that link, you probably could join Poisson. But that's not the goal today. Oh. The goal today is to do some mathematics. Yeah, I am showing the link, so hopefully no one else joins. It's pretty small on your screen. I'm looking at your screen right now. Okay, cool. I could go full <laughs> screen, too, but it's a little less convenient. Ooh, Bob okay. says... He has a chance to post a question and stump two streamers at the same time. That's oh. true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. Okay, I'm just going to make this a little bit Oh, good. I was like zooming in, but yeah, that's even better. How's that on your side? Does that look good? Looks good to, to me. Sweet. Hey, SG1. Right, so do Doing some research in math. What's that, Yeri? So... Critical, I guess they put a, a specific question, which is how do we find A, so which I think they're referring to like the first term of the sequence. Um, okay, but we yeah. should probably rewrite this in general anyway. Critical saying yes, okay. So I think a geometric series starts from N equals zero, which is something we'll have to worry about. But start with writing the initial one, maybe. That is a really nice looking... Yeah. Sigma. That is honestly fantastic. No, no, normally they look like complete garbage, but <laughs> I'm proud of that one. That's a yeah, that's really nice. So do we have to, we have to grab a negative three out of here or something, don't we? Or, an, or a four? Uh, yeah. I, I guess I would normally try to worry about that negative one there. And like uh, try and get it so they're both for n? Watch it. Oh no, we want to we wanna do some index stuff, don't we? Oh, so, yeah, because you want to write this as a n equals zero, right? Yeah. We're on a big girl. Yeah, you, you were first. Congratulations. So does that mean we'd have like an n minus two on um, the top and an n minus one, do you think? 
We want them to be the same index. Just that this part of it always mixes me up. If they, <laughs> I think they should both be n minus one, and then we can turn everything like backward to get back to n. It's like we want it to be like some number times r to the n with n equals zero. It's just that going from n equals one to n equals zero always trips me up here. Um, if we substitute n minus one for n. Or, or do we want to, how does this work? We, we need to like get a change of variables, right? So if we want, uh, if we want i to be at zero, Then when i is zero, we want this to be positive. Hey, Federico. So I, think, I think if we go like this, it should work. i equals n minus one. OK. Does that make sense? So when i is equal to zero, n should be equal to one? When i is zero, n is one. OK. Yeah, and then I guess we can see, oh, that's actually kind of a nice way of doing it. So if we apply this, it will be like that. And then i plus 1 minus 1 over 4 to the i plus 1. And then getting the first term will be, it'll like follow after this. Normally I do it the reverse way, but I think I like this more. <laughs> I just, I was trying to do like what felt intuitive to me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, no, cause I, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of like what I'm doing in my head, but I was like trying to reverse it and I was getting mixed up. Pop says, how am I better at drawing on PC than on whiteboard? <laughs> I think Excalibur is doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> um, It'd be cool if they had like a math symbol so you could, you could like draw and they would turn into a math symbol for us. Oh, yeah. That'd be so good. Dude, that, that, that's an idea right there for a, a math part for program. But anyway, we can supply this. We can subtract one from each side of the equation there to get i equals zero to infinity, and then simplify our exponents a bit to get negative 3 to the i over 4 to the i plus 1. So critical, even though we have things with i, it's really going to turn out to be the same thing as n. It's, it's just a, a letter in this kind of technique makes it a little more intuitive. Um, or at least like this like index changing thing makes it a bit more intuitive to me at least, in pen it sounds like. <laughs> Sn? I'm not sure what you mean with that critical. Yeah, what's S I mean? The sum? So like usually S N means like the sum up to N or something like that, right? Like the nth sum. Oh yeah. That Okay, that's right. And Kaden, I I I I just did. It's n equals sigma. Oh, so yeah, that, like talking about like a partial sum. Um, I don't get hung up that we're using i here. It's just another letter. It, we're still doing the the infinite sum. But we should be able to kind of get rid of one of these fours now. I think, right? Yeah. I think that's kind of like you've been kind of putting in the work to get that done. <laughs> Yeah, I've just so been here, like I've just been here, like saying hi to your chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think we're, I think Federico's like cutting to the end here, but we're we're, we're about to get there for ourselves too. Um, we we, we want to get it so it's just like to the power of i here. Ooh, that, that looks cool. Um, sorry. uh, the laser pointer. The yeah. Laser pointer awesome. <laughs> So we can rewrite 4 to the i plus 1 as 4 times 4 to the i. And uh... Plasan says, Don Sigmas look like that horse meme. What? The horse meme? <laughs> What's a horse meme? <laughs> Bop has a question for us after this, all right. Uh-oh. Oh, Caden, thank you. Ooh, what oh, the 69 bits? Ooh, 69, nice. <laughs> I forgot, I, I put in alerts for, 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 for 69 bits. 
Uh, I just said Cox Zucker machine from when we first dis discovered that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but, um... Oh god, Don, you keep going to the right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I I mean, we, we have the other thing on the bottom. Should, should we, like, go down? No, I just, I kind of keep moving it around to try to keep it in my... Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> okay. My chat stream, so they can, in case someone's just popping in, they can, uh... Oh, true. Yeah. Um, but you're doing great. I'm happy with all this. This all looks. This all makes sense to me. Awesome. See, so yeah, Kurt, 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 now at this point we're gonna like split things up based like all the exponents with i will go together, and then everything without an exponent will, will go together, and that's how we, we find our a here. So on top we basically have a one fourth, or sorry, without the exponents we, we have a one fourth, and then with the i's we have a negative three over four to the power of i. And now this is in the format for a geometric series that we know and love or hate. Uh, so in this one, we can now just say that A is one fourth. And so if you wanted to get the partial sum, actually, oh, we're saying I said before because you, you want to find the, the, the partial sum or it's all you need to know A. It's very helpful. That's good to hear. I guess, do, 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 you have, uh, do you want to say anything more after this? Or do you know what? You can do everything? All right, so I guess we can find the infinite sum. You got uh, this, Don. You got this. All right. <laughs> I mean, the, the formula isn't too bad for, for like, memorizing. You have s equals a, one-fourth over one minus r, or r is negative. So one minus negative three-fourths. And I think this will be what... Federigo got um we'll get one fourth that over way too far. This is fun. Over... I'm trying to like follow your stream and my stream at the same time. It's yeah, like, I realized I should have brought, brought up your chat on my end, but I forgot to. <laughs> uh fraction math. That'll be seven fourths. Yep, 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 yep. So we get like one seventh? Okay, yeah. Then Federico said three set, set sums. Oh no, it's, it's one seven. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'd say the sum of the or the infinite sum here is one seven. Crit critical, which I think is just all we needed to know for the original question. It's convergent. Find its sum. So I guess technically we could write that it's convergent too, or you don't want to specify that this is convergent uh, on your homework, but yeah. And the reason we know it's convergent is because this piece here, the absolute value of this negative three over four, is less than one. Yeah. Solve the problem like this. Oh, we got to let's oh, see what technique this link. person uses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll try and like skip through it and see if I can f figure out what they're doing. Uh, critical. In the meantime, while Don is taking a look at that, do you need us to download this and post it anywhere for you so you can see the solution? Right now, um, sweet. Well, what's this guy doing? Doesn't seem that different from. Oh, the, oh, the, the guy does it the way that I'm more used to doing it, I guess? Yeah, or the way they, they used to. The lower bound. Wait, I, th I think they dealt with the minus one exponent first, right? Because we still have n equals one. Yeah. What do you so mean? See, oh, see this top, thing. Right? They, yeah, or... see how they put like ARN and then ARN minus one? Yeah. So they mu they must have talked about how to convert the formula from a zero at the bottom as the lower bound to a one oh. at the bottom as the lower bound. They must have done something weird like that. I see. I didn't realize that you could do that, to be honest. How does it... So they got the same as us, right? They got the negative three over four, which is less than one. Yeah, so it should convert... Hey, milk. And hey, random dude. Yeah, so we should we should still get like the same result. But explaining the technique, it looks like you don't have to have it with n equals zero. Oh, that's the lower bound. The critical prefers our way. Oh, they didn't do the sum. They just checked to see if it was convergent, right? Right. So. 
How do yeah, I, I wish I showed the how how to get the actual sum here. Well what would they do? They would oh um, um, they would need to multiply everything by that. Oh, it's gonna be weird because n is equal to one. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when n is equal to one, so I can probably write it down, but it's gonna be a little okay. weird, isn't it? So, yeah, I'm watching. Them, uh, so I'm doing good, Brandon, dude. One, how about you? Uh, what did they have? They had negative one third. Um. And they had yeah. Negative three over four. Yes, to the end. Okay, so this is going to be our a. Right. Uh. Okay, oh. Okay. Right. So this is going to be our a, and our r is still going to be negative three over four. Okay. So yeah. What do we get here? This is going to be one fourth. It's going to be our a. Oh. Do you see it now, done? It works the same. It's just you keep your first. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because the formula always needs the first term and the common ratio. Yeah. Okay. So Curtis, I just need to multiply. It. Yeah, because I would have thought to just take like the minus one third, but of course, with the first term it is both of these at once because n equals one. Okay. <laughs> SPQ says the stream is going backwards. What? <laughs> Negative 110 seconds? That's weird. Oh, the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Refresh. <laughs> hey, I was saying over on YouTube. You're bad in math and you need to get, to get a good grade. If you have a question, please let us know. Um, and yeah, look, we're just like looking at this geometric series in a different way to, or different like techniques to get the same thing. So, uh, Critical, is there anything else on this, or are you good with this problem? I see Bob posted a problem. Uh-oh. Oh, is oh, this that coin Bob. problem that had the, the video about it? What does Bob want? Critical's good with that? All right. All right, I guess we can look at Bob. Is there, did anyone else say they have a problem? I don't think anyone from my end. Cool. I'm gonna pop a new Excalibur room for Ooh, you. Okay. There. Yeah, let me open that up. I just did the same exact thing twice, didn't I? That's weird, SBQ. My stream always starts at negative ten minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so bizarre. <laughs> there we go. Okay, where, where's Bob posting these sneaky questions on us? Uh, it was in my Discord. I just copied it in now, though. Oh, gosh. One of these things. I, I think there was, like, a Veritasium video on this, if I remember right. Hey, Fembox. How many revolutions of Circle A? And I was sure what do you need advice on? Well, the center of Circle... Wait, 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 wait. I can't, I can't understand the sentence. At the end of how, oh, at the end of how many revolutions of circle A will the center of the uh, circle first reach its starting point? I'm trying to figure out what's happening here too. Circle A is one third the radius of circle B. Yeah, I'm gonna draw something. Damn, it's around. Okay, so yeah, the phrasing is a little bit weird, but it's just wait. Wasn't it one revolution? Should be a lot more than that. Oh wait, oh A is also Oh, A is re like revolving as it goes around B, or as B revolves. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Okay. Is B revolving too? Or, I mean, or isn't A going around B, or...? Yeah, that's what I think. A rolls around, or... A rolls around circle B. So yeah, rolling around... I guess B is, I guess B, B is saying the same, but A is both revolving and orbiting, I guess, if we're talking about, like, planets. So if that's B, A is both like translating and rotating. 
Yeah, that's kind of wild. I'm wondering if we should like start with some circumferences. Uh oh, yeah. Could it just be like the ratio of them or something? So let's and see I'll, I'll, yeah. circumference of. Look, let me know what you want to buy on, please. I'll, what's I'll, the I'll... Ra what's the formula for circumference? Is it two uh two pi, pi r? r? Yeah. Two pi r. Okay. <laughs> So two pi, our radius, I just called our radius three R. And the circumference of the small circle should just be two pi R. Milk is calling it that <laughs> it's just the ratio of circumferences, which would be three. And Bob says, this is really logical and makes sense, right? Which makes you think that there's something trickier happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, small. <laughs> small. The circumference of the small circle. I mean, huh. I'm still not convinced that that's correct. The correct that answer isn't given? Well, okay, so three is given, so is it not correct? Question maker got it wrong. Oh, snap! So what's the trick here, Bob, or like what, what's wrong with it? Pembox wants to say four. Yeah, four seems kind of like a fun in, fun, fun potential answer, and I'm wondering why Fen is thinking four. It is R plus three R? I don't know if that's what it is, though. Four is correct. Cool. Huh. Why? So basically what Fem is saying is it'll make A does a, a full rotation for every quarter portion of B. It does a full... Oh, it's like a 1 to 3 ratio. Or... It's actually a quarter. Huh. Yeah, how do we get a quarter out of there? How do we... Yeah, so... Like, yeah, plus not. That's what we were thinking. It's just the number of times the length of the small one fits into the long one, but apparently not. Hey, Hi, Zach. Zach. How are you? Yeah, the, the, there definitely is a, a Veritasium video on this. So yeah, if we look at it just... A... That's right. It goes... When A rolls once, it uses up two pi r of the circumference of B. That's right. So wasn't that still three oh, then? Okay. Because the circumference is six pi r. So we're still. It's not still. So if we've gone a third of the way around. Three, three, yeah, okay. That's two pi r. Another third of the way around. That's 2 pi r. And another third around is another 2 pi r. Is that what we're saying? That's. I think that's the way that we want to think about it, absolutely. Like, that's what my intuition's. That's. I think that's what everybody's intuition is saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels weird that it would be 4, and I would want to know, like, why. You have to add one rotation because the circle is making a full rotation around the B. Really? Wait, the circumference? Okay, so I think Fem, Fem is saying something interesting here. So the circumferences are in a 3 to 1 ratio, but I think the trick is that you have to add an extra revolution because if you were fixed at the center of B, you would have to spin once as you watched A move. What? So, if we track like this point, aren't we? This point would have revolved around completely once. Revolved around completely once. So, like, it's. Yeah, how do we figure what? How do we explain this? <laughs> Jeff also says, damn, it's four. <laughs> <laughs> Take two of the same coins and do it yourself. Wouldn't have to, one of the coins be like. A third of the other? 
It's like it's 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 like an orientation thing. Orientation thing. Or he will have. Spin once as you watched A move. The center of A does one revolution around the center of B, while a point on the circumference of A does another three revelations. Oh! I think... You got it done? You got it? You figured it out? I, 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 but Fimax just said, helped me out. So we, we get the three revolutions from the situation that, you know, we all intuitively thought. But revolutions of A, like, this is just like A, like, locally revolving, or like, you know, rotating on its own. There's another revolution around the entire circle at once. It's like we've only accounted for A itself. Like, we, we've only accounted for the situation of, like, A in a vacuum rotating around three times. Or I should I, re, 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 revolving. But we haven't accounted for the entire revolution around the circle. It's like, it's the phrasing of the question. Like, how many revolutions of circle A without saying what type of revolution oh, that's so crazy it's kind of cool though yeah <laughs> it hurts my brain a lot <laughs> so yeah it has done three revolutions just rotating around on itself and then one giant revolution around b okay so the answer is b plus one sixth D. Yeah, just a, a linear <laughs> combination. I love it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so thanks for the question, Bob. And for not like letting us hang on for like an hour because we struggle with it. <laughs> Go do your own multiple says, choice. Imagine the small circle. The small circle is a clock. Imagine the small circle is a clock. Uh, I'm not sure if that helps, but <laughs> I, I maybe I kind of like one is the minute him, the other is the hour. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I kind of want to like I kind of want to post a video for us in uh, in Discord now so that we can watch it since we all got full. Oh yeah, I mean if it's very I I, I think Veritasia makes long videos, but it'd be cool to just like have it for reference. I mean it should be easy to find. Uh, there. Potassium point. Oh, Gamori say Gamori says you can think of okay, so it has one arm, it's the hour hand, and the hour hand only points to the point of contact of the big circle. Hmm. It's a okay. very interesting way to think about it. And Bob posted in my Discord too in the math homework. Like read that he, he made it in. I'll put it in the elements too. Just some math chat. Okay, thank you. Um, then I think. What are you thinking? Is is it time to start? Is it time to start going into math Discord? <laughs> I think Critical actually just posted another series one that we could take a look at. Oh, nice. Then okay. after that, I don't have any others. Let's Critical keeps them coming. But... I mean, if Critical wants to make this like their uh, their their tutoring session, I'm cool with that. Yeah, same. I think this is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's our new there's our new board. Sounds good. Uh, I need to recopy it because I just copied the link instead. So Critical's question well, I guess is I should probably stop being courageous Dolph and then actually put my name in. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been courageous dolphin in my heart. Oh no, thank you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a fun one. So the question is, why is it divergent? So I guess Critical knows the answer. We need to know why. I'm just going to resize it a little bit for us. Yep, please do. So... Uh, what is this? Is this 1 over 3n? 1 over 3n plus... I guess it depends how you start it. Yeah, if you start it from 1. 
Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so we have to start that at n is equal to one, and then go up to infinity. One third times harmonic QED. Yeah, then box mills harmonic. Yeah, what if we have to involve that? Uh, it's probably not important if the harmonic starts from zero or one. It would diverge either way. So I don't think we have to worry about that. Yeah, because I think we'd just be looking at what what's happening in the long run, right? Yeah. So. I like this. Uh, it's not a series, it's a harmonic sequence, right? Oh, this is a series. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the harmonic series does diverge, though. So, yeah. The sequence actually converges. Right. I, I need to write this a little more carefully. Yeah, I guess but we I need a sigma in here. Yeah, I think the idea is we're going to be using maybe a comparison test, right? I know, I'm, I'm sorry, Chad, um, my sigmas aren't as glorious as Dawn's. <laughs> I think I we're going to limit comparison. Try. Okay, there we go. Like a nice, glorious, <laughs> nice, glorious. Sigma. There we go. If I don't do the little like the har bars, the harmonic series must start at one, though, right? Oh uh, yeah, true. Yeah. In other way, it's the finite part, like Bob, Bob was saying. Zach taught us that. And I think the idea um, is like, if we know this diverges, then multiplying this by a third isn't really going to affect the divergence, right? Uh, right. And so I think just comparison tests wouldn't work because one third is less than the series we're interested in, but limit comparison tests I think should work. Oh yeah, do you, do, you, do you remember the limit comparison test? I believe if we can take the limit as n goes to infinity, why do the markers so thick by, by the way? Can I change that? Oh, I see, okay. Oh, thick with two Cs, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the, quite the marker thickness. <laughs> um. If we can prove that this ratio as n goes to infinity is a constant, then they either both converge or both diverge. Oh, okay, okay. So this one should work out pretty nicely. Oh, oh, we have to do a marker. Okay, yeah, blue, blue or at least I have to do a marker color. Um, so if a sub n is one third n and b sub n is one over n, we want to evaluate this limit and we do some fraction math. It just comes out to be limit as n goes to infinity the ends cancel we just get one third so it's equal to a third so because it comes out to be a constant the limit comparison test applies here and so we know that one over n diverges because it's the harmonic series so one over three n must also diverge i think that's how we would do that as an actual test yeah, that makes sense that makes sense i love that people can still choose your marker color <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> yeah it, it works well in excel draw that's so good and i think like this was critical that posted this right yes and so i would say like the intuitive way of thinking about this is that the two the numerator and the denominator are growing at roughly the same rate as kind of what we're saying right so if we compare the numerator and denominator which was what we're doing and we end up getting a constant it means that in the long run, they're kind of doing the same thing. Like they're, they're kind of pretty close. So they're kind of, uh, so if we know that one diverges, the other one's probably going to diverge as well. And I think that's kind of the idea here. Right. Incredible asks, what is the harmonic series? Which so we, we should have addressed earlier. <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> or as we should, we should have asked about that or, or, or earlier, but <laughs> I wrote the harmonic series, what it is up here. It's just kind of well-known series. As far as I know, most calculus classes, they just want you to, to memorize that the harmonic series is one over N from one to infinity. And just yeah. know that it diverges. That's usually what they expect you to just memorize in my experience, but I'm sure you can actually prove it or know the theory behind it more. Yeah, I'm not even sure if I, I... I think I've seen the proof that it diverges, but I'm not sure if it's something that my, my instructors actually do like in their Calc 2 classes, to be honest. Yeah, same. When to use this theorem. Uh, when to use limit comparison tests or the when to use the harmonic series or both, I guess. Cr critical. A chalkboard filter for Excalibur. <laughs> Oh god. That? Zach did, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Zach wants that. 
wonder. Oh, you can make your own hex code for the background. You can make it look a little like a chalkboard. What? That's kind of cool. Uh, Curtis asked them both. Okay. So, I was thinking of limit comparison tests here because, um, why am I thinking of that? Uh, my, so I initially, like, I wasn't sure exactly, oh, shoot, how do I explain this? <laughs> this is always one of the hardest things to describe, like, what tests do you use? It just comes with a lot of practice, I think, right? Yeah, so... I was at first trying to use comparison tests because I, I just have the harmonic series drilled into my head as an important series, and this looks just like the harmonic series. But the comparison test doesn't apply here because this uh, the harmonic series diverges, and so you would want your series to be greater than the harmonic series, but one third n is less than the harmonic series. Um, right. Is less than one over n. So the comparison test uh, doesn't really apply here. You, you need the sign, the inequality to be flipped for divergence. So like, oh, how about limit comparison? Because we get a really nice cancellation when we do this fraction setup. And thankfully it works out. And this is why we love Don, because Don knows all of the comparison tests where I would have to look every single one of them up. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I haven't like, taught this class in a long time, Don. <laughs> I, this part of Calculus I think is kind of fun, but... I wonder, like, would the integral test work here too? Yeah, because you would get ln. So Probably, yeah. It should. Yeah. The integral test should work. Yeah. It looks like a geometric series. Hurdle says it does almost look like one, but it's actually not. Um. And I actually thought geometric at first too when I very first saw this, but um, it's like this one. Yeah. It's times a half between these two terms, but then these two terms are not times a half, and the next two terms aren't times a half. You're, you're adding three each time in the denominator, not like multiplying by the same thing. Oh, you have to go the other way, right? Oh god. Oh I god. <laughs> oh no, oh no, undo, undo. <laughs> no, okay, there it is. <laughs> I think, do you have to do the first one divided by the second one? Uh, that would work if you want to like find the ratio for a geometric series, yeah. Like that, that, that ratio would have to be the same for at oh, each pair of terms. This would work, right? You take the second one, divide by the first one and you get a half. Oh, I guess as long as you're consistent, it, it should be the same. But yeah, this works. Then if you do one, one ninth, ninth over, yeah. And then this one gives a third? Yeah. No, two thirds? Or two thirds? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so what Don is saying is because we've looked at, we've kind of compared two groups of things and those two numbers aren't the same, it can't be a geometric series, even though it kind of looks like one. Yeah. And so I guess maybe like a even like work ways you we're adding three to the denominator each time we're not multiplying by three or by two or by anything. So. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Zach says the ratio test fails, therefore it's not geometric. <laughs> <laughs> In order to be geometric, one ninth shouldn't be there. Well, that's kind of an interesting problem. Yeah, you'd have to remove like one ninth and one fifteenth. You have to remove, I guess, every other term if you want to make it to be one half. Or at least every, I'm not sure, like, you, you might have to, like, remove an increasing number of terms each time. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Don. You have to end up, like, the first time you remove one, and then you remove two, I think, and then you remove three. That's kind of a, that's kind of a neat noticing. Oh, yeah. So, you, I, I, the further you go in the series, correctly, you have to remove more and more terms each time. But, yeah, I mean, there is, like, a trigger series contained in here. Oops, that's not a laser pointer. But uh, it's, it's not just a geometric series, so you can't really use geometric series stuff here. Bob has a really interesting interesting proof. I'm just going to read it out loud because I think it's oh, yeah. kind of cool. It's nothing that Critical would need to know, but he says, if you assume that this series converges to the real number C, then by laws, we know that three times... Oh, wait. So assume that... How does this work? If we assume it converges to C, no, we'd have to write we'd have to write that a little bit better, I think. But he want, he's trying to use a proof by contradiction. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I can see what he's trying to do in my chat. I guess but I, I'd want it I'd want it written a little bit better. the The contradiction you would get is that the harmonic series converges. Hmm. Okay. 
Oh, I, I can see it now. So if, if this converges and we factor out one third, then one third times that series should converge due to like- Person in YouTube chat, sums. I can't read that. Please speak English. But that sum we would get would be the harmonic series, which we know diverges. That would be the contradiction. Yeah. I don't know if that makes, I if that makes sense, but I, I thought it was kind of an, an interesting way to, to write it. Yeah. Um, Bob, I agree with you. I, I wish we had the same chat. That would be a lot of fun. It, it would be. Like, I, I could definitely display. I think I, I, I should have looked into it for this stream. I forgot to do it again, but I think you can, like, display two different chats on your screen, which means that we'll probably get it on our end, too. But it wouldn't be, like, combined actually in Twitch, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, I hope the, they'll that's do the that. Part. Yeah. Um, I think I, StreamerBot has the built in feature where, like, if you stream on Twitch and YouTube, you get both of them at the same time. You just can't display it, right? Yes. Um, I would use that, but it's like, it's kind of weird. It has some nice features, though. Critical's asking a follow up question. A sub n is always the first term, one third. Ooh. Yeah, A1 is always the first term. Yeah, if you're talking about a geometric series where you are... Or... Oh, for the harmonic series? Uh, the harmonic series, it starts at 1. Uh, that's a good point. I think that Box wrote out a few terms earlier, but... Uh, the harmonic series... From n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So it starts with 1 over 1, which is 1, plus a half, plus a third, plus a fourth. So it, it looks like this. And um, we, we notice here that, like, you know, the 1 half and the 1 don't appear in this uh, series down here. But the nice thing when you talk about convergence and divergence, you actually don't care at all about the first few terms. You only care about, like, what happens in the long run. So in the long run, these behave very similarly. Uh, so usually, if you chop off like a finite number of terms, you still have infinity over here. Is the idea, which is probably a bit more like in depth than you really like need to to, to know. But if the first few terms are different. You're you, you're you're usually fine. So yeah, and anything else on this one? Cr critical, hey, underscore. How to find a sub n from the question then? Oh yeah, cr 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 critical. I oh, my god, critical uh, underscore. We're, we're streaming with, with, with pen right now. Hi underscore. How are you? <laughs> Do you want to prove harmonics divergent? I'm not off the top of my head. No. Uh, how to find we'd from to, the? We'd question. have to look that one up in the in the. We could probably look it up inside the calculus textbook, but. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have a question, it might be interesting to, to look at, but... How to find a sub n from the question, then? a sub n over b sub n equals c. So, yeah, we're talking about the limit comparison test. We usually do a sub n as whatever uh, sequence we're given. And to be fair, we weren't given the sequence in terms of n here. We did have to figure that out for ourselves. Um... And there's different ways to write the same thing here, which is kind of a frustrating part of uh, series and sequences sometimes, but <laughs> uh, you notice or well, how you get the a sub n out of this thing here is you notice that uh, the numerator is always 1, so we can just set up a fraction with 1 as the, the numerator. And the bottom are always multiples of 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, they're, they're, they're all multiples of 3. So we can say 1 over 3 times n, and then we just need to figure out what our starting index is, which actually for this one is actually not, it's not that important, but we should do it to be safe. Uh, since we start with 1 third, we want n to start from 1, so that way uh, it matches if you go back and like check it. So was that your question critical, or did I misinterpret you? Okay, okay.
No problem. Sorry, Don, I had to fly into chat. Oh, okay. They're, they're spinning the wheel on me. They're spinning the wheel and oh. GPS voices. Good. <laughs> Um, all right, so it's not like critical is all good with this question now. Okay, cool. I'm not saying, I think about harmonic series being divergent. Group the terms continuously doubling quantities and then compare the sums of those group terms with one half plus one half plus one half. The harmonic is larger than an infinite sum of one halves. Really? In doubling quantities. I think that they're going in halves. But I guess you could always reverse it. Bob will send a short proof in Discord. All right. Um. Oh god, I'm clicking on all, okay, all of the wrong windows. Up. You need it done? Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh wait, that was just the Excalibur like homepage that you sent me. Oh dang it. Boop, there it is. Awesome. And congratulations, Zach, on your QED point. Oh, nice job, Zach. And I don't think we need to download that for Critical. I think Critical has been kind of taking some notes on that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, that whole board. Sounds like it, yeah. Cool. Also, in chat, you're thinking that the TTS is like Talos. I don't have it into Discord yet, so Don can't oh. hear everything on side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So we don't have a question. They're literally, they're literally, they're literally putting like a hundred Chinese characters into my TTTS right now. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's not what happens. <laughs> oh my god, Andre. This is what Bob said, it's just like a little proof of the harmonic series is divergent. Ooh, so we don't have a question to, 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 to look at here. Oh, we may as well. Hoo hoo, hey, how's it going? Um The Fenbox was saying something about like grouping things in doubling terms and comparing it with like one half to the n. Oh yes, yeah, so you can always you can always build another one half. Oh that, that makes sense. Oh well it's always greater than Ooh, something exciting oh. has happened in, in, in a, a, a real show. What's that? Uh, Zach, Zach just spun a, a VIP sale. So, so VIP is now going on sale for one third of the usual price. So oh. 15,000 channels are going to be on sale 5,000 channels. One, one, one. Grab it. Here they go. Um. As soon as you know, associativity works with positive easier. series. Oh, okay. <laughs> Underscore. Who? You, you're Ooh, sick? Oh, no. I hope you feel better. Uh, I'm doing good, though. Uh, chilling out, VIP. doing some math problems with a uh, pen. And it's a ton of fun. I should, uh, my cam is blocking it slightly, isn't it? And N Simplex, congratulations on your VIP. Enjoy your. I right, so, so, so critical. It's like a for fun exploration for why the harmonic series is divergent. You don't need Enjoy to know any of this. VIPs, my friends. We're just kind of like wondering about like the, the theory of it, but now you don't need to, to know if you don't want. You want to know? Okay. Well. Feel free to play around with them. So yeah, we we, we can sort of like dive into this more. Okay. Um, critical is actually curious about how this works, and I actually haven't. I like if we're comparing it with one half. To the end, doesn't that converge? So, what are we actually doing here? So, we, we want to get it so it's divergent, right? Or is this the sum? It's n time to half. Okay. Yeah, we're basically doing like one plus a half plus a half, and we can make as many halves as we want. Oh, okay, yeah, and that's just unbounded. It's not going to. 
that would just be the test for, for divergence, which we, we never get to use in calculus class, I feel like. <laughs> so you show that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the idea is because you just keep adding a half, you're never going to be able to get to like anything convergent, right? And uh, one half times n. Well, I guess that's plus one. Well, uh, uh, if we want to work my long term. And that diverges. Okay. So, to try and explain this for critical. Oh, and I had channel three over on YouTube. A Moroccan baccalaureate math exam? Uh, I don't think we can solve a whole exam for you. If you have a specific question, we can take a look at it. I can type it out there in chat or put it in Discord. What kind of exam do they have? A Moroccan baccalaureate math exam. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sounds intimidating, but... Uh, in the meantime, so I, I think Critical wants to know a little more about like this uh, shorthand proof here. So Critical, the, oops. Let me, I guess, start from scratch. So our goal here is to prove that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges. Do some Moroccan math? <laughs> Hell yeah, <up> bucks. <laughs> I wonder if Moroccan math is different than regular math. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to do some clever techniques here, because uh, one of our, like the fact, this fact is kind of like a fundamental fact, and when you prove things that are fundamental, you usually don't have that many tools to do it with. Um, so let's break out one over n as a series. So you plug in n equals one, you get one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth. Uh, Bob went out to the eighth, so we'll go out to, to the eighth here. Oops. Plus, and then I'll do dot dot dot. So that's just plugging in values of n for the harmonic series here. We need to do something clever. Like, we want to find some series that we can compare this with. Uh, and if we think it diverges, we want to find a divergent series to compare this with. Uh, and so, if you're clever enough to spot it, you can basically create one halves. Uh, out of these fractions here if you group them in a clever way. So we can. So we, we already have we have a one there which we'll kind of ignore for now. We already have a one half here. So let's look at the one third and the one fourth. Uh, we know that one fourth plus one fourth is one half. And so if we do some inequality magic, we know that a third is more than a fourth. So this is greater than this, if we copy everything else and keep everything else the same. Uh, and we can do the same thing over here, but we get, we have a like a one eighth on the end here. And so we know that four eighths is going to be a half. So let's take these three terms before it and make them all one eighths as well. And we have the same neat fact that a fifth is more than an eighth. A sixth is more than an eighth. A seventh is more than an eighth. And an eighth is the same thing as an eighth. So uh, this inequality here still holds because all we've done is take individual terms and change them out for things that are less than them. It's like this one fifth became a one eighth, six became an eighth, all that good stuff. Um, and now that's a good explanation. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, I'm glad because I'm like making it up as I go based off what Bob did. <laughs> uh, and so now what we can do is we can notice that, or so we, we've created a new series here that we can analyze and hope that it diverges because we this the series is uh it's less than the initial thing so if this thing that's smaller diverges then the bigger thing should also diverge so let's analyze the thing we have here and let's kind of do some grouping this one i guess i'm going to keep the one outside everything else we can 
find a pattern for in terms of n. Um, because we can group this as a half, this is a half, this is a half. So we're really just summing up a half a bunch of times. So let's say this thing is equal to the sum of 1 half times n. Some smart people, some smart people back in the days of candles. It still was proved back in 1360. Wow. This is proved in 1360. Apparently, that's before like um Descartes. So I wonder how they even like wrote series back then. Jeez, that was before I was born. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Didn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I, that's surprising. I didn't think this is that old. That's crazy. It's probably like a geometric argument. I bet. Um, you don't really want the end inside the. I'm really curious because uh, well, I don't know. They they were starting to work with like sequences and series kind of in and around then. I think if I remember from math. Oh really? Correctly. Hey, Muhammad. So I, I wouldn't be that surprised actually, but yeah, that's very Andrew, interesting. Sorry, <laughs> it was getting a little chaotic, wasn't it? <laughs> the the, the wheel will show. Here, just spinning the wheel every five seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ben Box, did I make a mistake here with the n inside the sum? So I thought we it's kind of trapped inside the sum, isn't it? Muhammad over on YouTube, uh we're we're proving that the harmonic series diverges. Yeah, I think I think Fem is right. I don't think we want that uh that part. Otherwise we'd get uh Oh really? A half plus two over two plus three over two. Right? I feel like that should I mean we still are I guess uh I just like it going out to infinity is what's confusing me because like you could make that if you like group like, you know, you group those two halves and you can get your two over two. That's what I was thinking. Maybe that's not right. And I guess it's also equal to one half times n. And that's probably that's probably better. I I mean I'm just getting confused on the Oh yeah, there's no n is what okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, just something Oh, oh that makes yeah, Okay, that's half. better. Yeah. And that's equal to one half n too, but <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. That's equal to a half n, right? Okay. It's actually, yeah, I think we prefer it in the series form if we want to think about divergence. Um, so, like, I guess if you summon one half infinitely many times, you can just look at it and say that it diverges. Or I think if you want to be formal about it, you get to use, like, the test that no one ever uses called the test for divergence. Which is, if you have a series... Uh, sigma a sub n. Uh, Anders, you're a madman. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to, to zero, then a sub n diverges. I don't know, this might be a little bit like extra, but <laughs> the. No one true we like never get to actually use that in practice yeah i i i, I kind of feel bad for it but it's basically if this if the terms of your <laughs> it's like the test that never gets invited to like all the other test parties yeah, exactly <laughs> the ratio test is, is the popular kid yeah <laughs> um <laughs> and so yeah it, it basically what the test of divergence says is that if you're if the terms of your series don't approach zero you have no hope of something to to zero is more intuitive explanation. Um, and here the limit as n goes to infinity of one half, it's still just a half because there's no n's in there. So one plus a half still diverges. So now by the comparison test, we've named a series that is less than one over n that also diverges. Or uh, sorry, that diverges, which means one over n must diverge. You can do this proof with one six instead of one half. I guess so. Uh -oh. oh, is that Reese or is it one of the other dogs? Someone's at the door. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go check and see what's up. Good luck. 
Um, oh, incredible. You were going to do the limit comparison test? That might work, too. To, no, it wouldn't. I, I, I like the limit comparison test in the, in the other one because um, you get a cancellation with the ends. In that, in that case, you don't get a cancellation, and it's just kind of weird. Here's a tough one to consider trying to answer. Find the variance in the distance between any two randomly chosen points on a circle? What? That sounds kind of crazy. I bet there's some really neat relationship there, though. When to use this test? Critical, the limit comparison test, or what? Or what test? And hey, Ruby over on YouTube, you have five times cosine three pi plus i sine three pi. Is that equals negative thirty three or? Like, are you solving for something there, Ruby, or, or what's the problem? So you're doing some complex variable stuff. Complex variables? <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I, I have Ruby over on YouTube who... I'm, I'm trying to figure out what they're asking. Uh, they put in... Can I, like, copy-paste text in here somehow? Probably. Like that. Okay, so they, they put... At, at the bottom, that's kind of small. They just put this in the chat, so I'm trying to figure out what exactly all these dashes mean and what exactly is happening here, what they're trying to solve for, but... It's like if... 5 cos 3 pi plus i sine 3 pi. So yeah, Ruby, you can be even more specific about, like... Is there a variable that we're trying to solve for, or maybe... I don't think these things are equal to each other. Dashes are numerator and denominator. Uh, numerator and denominator? Apparently, like those dashes oh, in the middle are numerator. Negative 33? Like that? Oh, maybe it's that. So, are we simplifying this or what are we doing with this, Ruby? Oh, Curtis, I think. We can probably simplify this because there's like three pies in it. Uh, I mean, yes, yeah, I guess, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe, so we're trying to get this into, like, um, oh, the English isn't their first language. Um, uh, are you trying to convert it to a different complex form? Like, do you want it to be, like, A plus I times B? So we can definitely do that. In critical, you're asking when we use the test for divergence? Almost never is <laughs> the real answer. It's too easy. Teachers don't usually give ones that are tests for divergence. Or it'll be like a tiny multiple choice question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I I think my first calculus teacher, whenever I first took it, like some of them just like explicitly disallowed the ratio test because it was too easy as well. <laughs> like we had to do it the harder Why, way. How can you disallow a test? I don't know. That's, That's so kind of annoying. <laughs> Good morning, Stuki. How are you? I'm not hearing back from Ruby, so maybe we can at least convert this into rectangular coordinates, and hopefully that's what what Ruby means. I'm not sure, like, what else we could possibly do with this problem. Yeah, we can maybe try to simplify it a little bit, but I don't think we can do too too much after that. Uh, I'm really awful. Okay, these are actually three pies, so this shouldn't be too too terrible. Right? Yeah, we'll get one, ones or zeros. So. Or negative okay, ones. Cosine of three <laughs> pi is negative one, because it's equal to cosine ne of pi. Negative one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So minus one. And sine three pi should then be zero. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So we get i times zero over negative thirty-three. Oh wait. We just heard back from Ruby. Three sine or three pi sine three pi over forty-four. I'm glad Ruby, you got us down. Is 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 that a different problem or? <laughs> Chat. I think you broke my lights again. Oh no. <laughs> they will kick back in eventually. <laughs> they are locked. <laughs> so. 
So Ruby, are is, is that a different thing? Three pi sine three pi over forty four. Uh, Muhammad, the I mean, divergence is kind of a big like topic, but like it's kind of divergence is when things don't behave well, they kind of blow up to infinity it, it, in the long run. It's the quick explanation. So yeah, Ruby, if you can put maybe like a screenshot in my Discord, I think that might, that might be easier. If it's not in English, we can usually figure out how, how to interpret it. Uh, so maybe we'll just put a pin in this one for now. Oh, hey, Hardlocked. How you doing? <laughs> I guess, I mean, we're already you know, there for, for the rectangular coordinates. Actually, it's just a real number, isn't it? We get... Yeah, negative, or just 5 over 33, I think, by the time we simplify it. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, uh, Ruby, please let us know, or like uh, maybe a screenshot or something that, because I'm, I'm not really sure if we answered the question that you were asking or a different question. <laughs> so. Is there anything that I missed from chat? Or does anyone have a question? Oh yeah, so milk to give a bit of a challenge one, which is find the variance in, in the distance between any two randomly chosen points on a circle. And there's a clarification that it's in a circle. Which I don't know how that's going to work. I don't really have an idea, but... <laughs> the variance? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like, copy-paste the, the text into the Excalibur draw again. Oh. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I feel like there may be some kind of neat geometric interpretation for variance or something. I assume that's... The, I, I, I don't really know. God. What is happening to this text? And I will pop a new Excalibur into oh, yes. chat for you. We can probably do like another one here. Okay. Oh, this was um, edited to say this between any two points uh, in a circle. Uh, Dom, can you bring me back into chat in a second? Yes. There we go. Okay, hopefully that fixes the problem. Okay, find the variance and the distance between any two randomly chosen points on a circle. Why does my intuition say to use the unit circle? I'll probably simplify the problem. And the okay. variance would be the same, right? Yeah, I don't know. Or, well, it'd be a scalar multiple, maybe? Or no, maybe it'd be like a square. I, <laughs> you know, that's already... <laughs> maybe do it in terms so of I feel R? like maybe if we just take like a circle with a radius R. Yeah. The Discord link doesn't work, Ruby? Ooh. X1, and we pick like these two points. Whoops, I don't know why I put Y2. Let's do X1, um, Y1, and we do X2, Y2. And we know that X1 squared plus Y1 squared is equal to R. Is that true? Uh, is it R squared? R squared, yes. Yeah. Are. What's the formula for variance? Probably good to know that at least. <laughs> If we could figure out the expected value, we could find the variance pretty quickly, I think. Right. Oh God. I swear my stat skills are gonna be shown to be lacking. Gamori says, I wouldn't attempt this unless the random process is clearly laid out. Meaning that it's probably tricky. Yeah, but I trust Samori's opinion a lot. <laughs> yeah. And milk and horns, yeah, that's the formula I was thinking about. Oh, that one, okay. EX, EX squared minus EX squared, yeah. Hi, Soapy Seller, welcome in. 
That's a great name, by the way. Oh my God, what did I just do? Okay. We did, we did just get a screenshot coming in hot from Ruby. I know if we want to look into this more, though. Or... What is this? Oh. <laughs> Zach, your turn, Don, for the madness. I like this. The number of states that start with the letter A tend to the number of states that end in the letter A. Well, Alaska See, counts I, twice. I finally survived the madness. <laughs> For now, <laughs> Arizona, not Arkansas. Oh, in German. Oh, okay. Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Alabama. There's a lot of ones that start in N and A. Wow. I I I, I must be missing some. Uh, scientific, thanks for the follow. <laughs> oh my god. What is this? Are there only- I can't think of any other states that start with A. But ending in A is gonna be annoying. Wait, okay, I'm gonna start- I'm gonna write them down for you. Alaska, you said? Yeah. Alaska- this is a true team effort. I'm on the other, I'm on the new Excalibur. Oh, the new one? Right? Okay. Alaska, what a hero. Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alabama, Arizona. Hawaii. <laughs> hey, Janelle, and hey, uh, Kasim Dosky. How, how's it going? Um, Ruby, we'll look at your question in just a second. Um, Are there other... I can't. I can't think of any other off the top of my head. I guess so. I I I, I guess we'll call us our four that start with A and then four that end with A. Well, we have two or wait, we have three already here. So, but can I send a math question? Yeah, sure. Uh, feel free to type it out in chat there or put it in my Discord. Um. Anything Montana, nice. How many Carolinas are there? Oh, north and south. Virginia as well. Kasim, hi. I said hi. <laughs> Did I not say hi? Uh, also west oh, and west not west, Sorry. I guess. Uh, no, north and south Carolina, right? Yeah, and then West Virginia and normal. Virginia for some reason. Oh, West and normal. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna, this, like... N, this N here stands for normal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the Dakotas. Dakota, yeah, good call. Well, you, you really know your your states. I don't. I don't I, Jeff I, helped me out with the Dakotas. No oh, okay. Problem. I don't make provinces I can name. <laughs> um. Uh, Jeff has also suggested... Um, oh, Georgia. California! I should know that one. <laughs> Georgia, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cali, of course. Like, I feel like every... <laughs> there's so many states that end in A. <laughs> yeah, Nevada? <laughs> Nevada, yeah. Florida? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, I'm back to thick marker. <laughs> thick boy. <laughs> Fem says I keep wanting to say Alberta. No, no, that's, that's <laughs> Canada. That's Canada. Oh wait, Canada ends in A. Yeah, and Canada is basically a state. Um, complex numbers and De Moivre's theorem. That's what Ruby is saying. Okay, for that um other complex numbers problem. Oh god. I and there's going to be a different problem after this. Ooh, can I have a multivariate variable limit too from scientific? Oh my gosh. Hoi, Doug. How are you? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I We probably get to the actual like homework questions. So can we think of any of this quickly? If not, 
Indiana and Iowa. Write them down. Indiana, Indiana Iowa. Spinning the wheel of okay. Show. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you for the follow, Doug. So four times one, oh, two, no, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Four times sixteen, which is sixty-four. Maybe you quite final answer, Zach. <laughs> uh, Gamori, who is also from British Columbia, asks, are we just choosing to ignore the Canada as a state comment? <laughs> <laughs> One day. Where's Enig we need Enigma here, too. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, so I'm not sure if that's uh, right Minnesota. or wrong. But... We forgot Minnesota. Minnesota? Oh, Minnesota. you're at, yeah. Cecilia? <laughs> oh well. What else is up there? It's like Wisconsin. <laughs> Louisiana. Ooh, Louisiana, yeah. Oklahoma. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Nebraska. How many states do you guys have? It's too many apparently. Jeez. Our, our, our flag is getting crowded with all the stars on them. Jeff says Pennsylvania. Oh my God. Pencil. Did you spell it wrong? Bain. I don't know how to spell. <laughs> Wiggles. It's like how, whatever you said your name at the end of receipt, you just kind of squiggle put something on there. <laughs> New California. <laughs> New California. Yeah. <laughs> They're looking at the your backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> Gojira. <laughs> That, that, that reminds me of uh, the blue chicken, Kojiro. Oh, yeah. Added four more. Uh, we added five more. So that's 21 oh, times four. 84? States that end in A is what we're looking for. Or begin with A, right? Either A, that's right. A. Yeah, so start with starts with A times ends with A. So you have some repeats in there. That's crazy. Oh god, okay. There's a lot of states that end in A, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so right below us, I'll write Ruby's question. Um, okay. I'm, I'm just gonna scroll up. Now that we've had our... Our, uh... Ge uh geography lesson of the day. Yep. <laughs> so these are individually over four, I guess. We did get Montana. Yes, we got Montana. We did get Nebraska. Some parameters. <laughs> All right, so Ruby, so if you're still was, here, it was a, it was a question on. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll oh I'll pause while you're writing. Sorry, oh no, I I, I already wrote. Uh, if you're gonna ask Sophie something. Oh God. Um, you are still there, Ruby. Okay. So what are we trying to do here? Trying to get it into a certain form or? So yeah, uh, that's my assumption. Ruby, are you trying to simplify this? Like, um, put it into rectangular or exponential? So like there's different forms for a complex number, I assume. Maybe we're doing one of these forms? Because, um, there's, like, the actual screenshot is posted into the, uh, welcome channel in my Discord, but the instructions I definitely can't read. <laughs> hey, Doug. Yeah, because we have R, right? R should be 5. Yeah. And then theta here should Actually, be 3 pi over 4, right? Yeah. Wait, maybe I can... Can I easily get this Google translated? Ah, oh, freaking Discord. Um, it was a cool question, Sophie, yeah. That was posed by the one and only Zach himself, who was part of the Chads, by the way. Shout out to the Chads. Okay. I love how Fembox like channel point redemption equals streamer asked for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true, yeah. To be fair, I I actually I don't know if I set up a rule that you can't do like what Zach did with like numbers as words. I feel like as long as you get enough time to think about the question, right? I guess so. And I feel like it was perfect. It was a good like tag team effort there. Yeah. 
Oh, I see Doug popped over to your channel too. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks for checking Don out, Doug. You should, you should give him a follow too. Sophie Seller, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Yes, Y8, you are correct. So 5 e to the i 3 pi over 4 is another way to write this, and that's writing it in, with that exponential form. Yeah. I'm trying to get it translated with Google Translate, but uh, it doesn't feel like working right now, apparently. Oh my gosh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff says e to the i i 3 pi over 4 plus ln 5. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so so Ruby, I I we're, I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do with this. I guess let's at least get it into each of these forms, and maybe Ruby will say if that matches what they're supposed to do. So I don't really know what else we do with just a complex number like this. Right. So that's that one. And then if we want it's cosine of three pi over four. Uh, that's going to be like. Cosine will be minus or two over two, and then sine will be positive or two over two. Uh, oh yeah, these are pi by four. Yeah, you're right. So they're going to be uh, yeah, root two over two. Does that make sense? Oops, I thought I said it was minus, and I didn't write it. <laughs> it's fine, dude. Don't bother. Uh, I'm sorry, Ruby. That the translation issue is kind of hard to to deal with. Or right, you said the mobs theorem. Sorry, I was supposed to take a power of this, maybe. I don't see a power in the screenshot though, so. Happy 420, by the way, chat. Oh yeah, I forgot. All right, so, so, so yeah, that looks good. Okay. That looks good in Cartesian. So yeah, Ruby, I'm sorry that we can't like, or we're having this translation issue. If you're able to use like, uh, Google Translate takes images into it, so if you're able to take like a picture, of maybe your entire worksheet, and put it, and plug it in there, and post that, might be able to help you more. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, we're having this like translation issue. Yeah, milk and horns. We have some. Uh, we definitely have some Germans in the chat right now, for sure. <laughs> I think Sophie's from Germany in too. Twenty oh four. Someone asked me what the variance was, and I was trying to explain it. They said, oh, I just probably don't know the word. Like, And then we looked it up in German, and they knew what it was. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Amster. Um, all right, so we do have the multivariable limit from scientific as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want, can we, should we do that on this page as well? Um, yeah, I don't think this will be do. too many steps. OK. Failed to fetch image. Oh, that's great. Do they love David Hasselhoff? Is David Hasselhoff German? Ill to fetch image. Ugh. Okay, I'll just rewrite it. I'll do it to the right. Oh, to, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, section it off. We have the limit. It's x, y, which is 0. Oh my gosh, 120 AM. You're crazy, Sophie. <laughs> wow. Wait, Germans love Hasselhoff the way French love Jerry Lewis. Is it Jerry Lewis or Jerry Louis? Like, isn't like Jerry Lewis in the news a band or something? Squared plus y. This is an interesting one. I'm just saying this is a classic limit, not splitting the trick. So maybe it's not as simple as I thought it'd be. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Huey Lewis in the news. Never mind. Thank you, Zach. Jerry Lewis in the news. <laughs> Method is called. Uh, so what do we get? So is this zero and one, right? It's have to be square. Um. Oh, sorry. It's zero comma zero. I just. Oh, zero zero. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, otherwise it's just zero. <laughs> well, today's a palindrome date, also four twenty 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 four. Whoa, huh. that's cool. Happy palindrome day, chat. So scientific is their method called? It's their method called curve level method. Uh, the early they they were saying that there was um, they saw a YouTube video of someone using level curves to do it super quickly. I don't know how you use level curve to do a limit. Well, I mean, we. I you said wouldn't. equal to z and try things. Did 
Does the limit exist? Do we know that? Do we suspect that it exists? Um, I assume we're going to prove non-existence because like proving existence, I think is, I don't even know how you do that <laughs> if it's not defined there. It'd be really hard because I feel like it's going to be like a double epsilon kind of business. Um, Jeff suggests dividing the numerator and the denominator by x squared, question mark. That could help. Hmm. It is take two sequences to go to zero, zero, and show limits of the sequences are not the same. Well, yeah, so we can like go along different paths. That's, I mean, that's my first thing is like just go on the x and y axes. It's usually yeah, the easiest thing to try. First. Okay, yeah. Because that's what my, my intuition usually says these limits typically don't exist. And if we can find a couple paths, then I think we're good. So we take, um, wait, that's not the x axis. <laughs> This is the x-axis. Uh, so we're taking y equal to 0. Get 0 over x squared plus 0. And you just get a big old 0. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't work. That's not defined. Because x is also 0, right? Yeah, x is tending towards 0 there, right? So... Is this... Wait, x goes to 0... Oh, you get x squared over x squared. Oops. Well, no, but it's x time. Why am I confusing myself? Am I rusty on these? <laughs> yeah, no, I think we would get a, an indeterminate case there as well. You're going to get 0 over x squared. Oh, I guess 0 over x squared. You actually cancel the x's before you multiply it by 0? What? No. <laughs> that feels so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it would just be zero, though, wouldn't it? I feel, I mean, it is equal degrees. <laughs> it's true, except when x is equal to zero. Yeah, exactly. It's true, except when x is equal to zero. It's true. You can assume x is not equal to zero. All right, we're doing a limit, right? Yeah. So we can assume that we can assume that we're work looking at paths that are really close to x is equal to zero, but not necessarily at x is equal to zero. So this so, should be okay, Don. Okay. Oh. Okay. I, I guess we are allowed to do like that cancellation. Then. <laughs> and so I guess we do the same thing, but for the y-axis. I assume yeah, we'll get zero like again, we'll but let's let's see it. Yeah, it looks like we might get zero again here. So that's not helpful. So what we want to try to do is we probably want to try to make... We probably want to try to make a one somehow. I'm just trying... I'm, I'm debating how to make that work. Yes, yeah, it's like... It sounds almost like x equals y. I mean, that will go to infinity. I don't know if that... Hello, Reese. Uh, critical, yeah. Please add... Ask your question. I think this is the last one that we have in queue before we can get to, to yours. Can, um, we, can we choose like a parabolic or a cubic path so that we can kind of... Like what if y was equal oh, to x squared? Yeah, you get a cancellation there. Oh, it's going to go to zero though, isn't it? No, it's not. It'll blow up. I guess... Yeah, because the higher power will be in the numerator if we choose like y equals x squared, right? And I mean, I guess diverging isn't zero. Does that is is that good enough? I'm gonna say I'm not too good with the uh, multivariable limits. Oh wait, no, it, it goes to zero. Never mind. I, I forgot. We're oh, going good. to zero. Yeah, x tends towards zero. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So what, what we want to try to figure out is if it's possible to make a substitution so that we get the same power in the numerator and the denominator, right? If I remember correctly, that's kind of the sneaky way to figure it out. Yeah. Would y have to equal 1? No, you can't let y equals 1. Y is going to 0. <laughs> Convert to polar, Conrad on YouTube says. Bob was saying to take 
sequences. Linear paths won't be sufficient, right? Random method, you want to know if it works. Can we equal the function on limit to C in getting level curve? Are we suspecting that it converges if we're setting equal to C? Or do you just mean equal function and generally equal to C? I mean, you definitely can get level curves. I, I don't know how they help you. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here for a second, see if I can see yeah. if I can figure it out. We do have an idea to convert it into polar. I don't know how we'd make theta behave. The polar seems potentially possible, too. And then Chad's also looking at the level curve thing. Let's see what, what you're doing, Penn. Oh, Ruby, I just saw what you posted now. So that's what we did. We can definitely explain it more. If, if that's what you're... So yeah, uh... <laughs> dang it. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah, Ruby, we can definitely help explain this more. Maybe we could so we, do something sneaky with We did, like, like X. get that, but I didn't realize that you needed to help. You need help on how, on how to get there. Okay, I'm going to open up that link scientific show and see if I can... Same. Uh, so set it equal to, yeah, we could set it equal to a level curve, but I wouldn't do that yeah. unless we suspect that the limit actually is equal to zero. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's... Uh, Zach, mm -hmm. y equals mx won't work, uh, and Gamori gave us the reason why up a little bit higher. Okay. So linear won't work. It has to be some other kind of function. Benbox saying this is cool. So should we try it with different values of, of C Benbox and just look what the level curves are like? Connor's saying it should converge to zero. Oh, someone says it does converge to zero? Uh, yeah, Conrad over on YouTube, who I haven't seen before, but... Uh, they're, they're saying that you can use polar coordinates. I'm kind of interested in this level curve business first. Oh, polar coordinates would make it a lot easier to actually prove. Yeah. Uh, over on my chat, I'm going to take a look at this in three dimensions, just for funsies. Want to see what it looks like? Like solving for y and then replacing it on the <laughs> limit. I don't know, chat. That looks nasty. <laughs> we get that the limit is equals to That's some quite c. nasty around the origin. Solving for y. Ooh. Oh, you actually graphed it? Yeah. Okay, so I guess what the idea that scientific is saying is to not even necessarily graph level curves, but you just solve it for y and you convert it to a single variable problem. So. You'd have x squared y equals c, x squared plus y, and event and apparently the limit should equal c, which isn't unique. Okay, I'm um, just gonna move over and we'll take a look at your work here. Oh, I see. Jeff is oh Jeff is suggesting a specific curve. Oh, that we get probably from solving it. I see. Oh, and this limit will, if you convert it into a single variable like that, that's going to converge to, or that's going to go to C, which isn't unique. Is that legitimate? It, it seems like it makes sense. I, I've never done a multivariable limit like that, though. Uh, wait a second. Does that pass through the origin? 
Uh, when x is equal to zero, we get zero, right? Yeah. So this is a path that we can follow. That makes sense. So I typically want us to know why this works. It might just be a coincidence that it works. I I, I don't know. Um, or can this even be like a sub? Can we just like take figure use this to figure out our sub and put it in the original thing? And that would yeah, that's what I'm. That's probably the more yeah okay. Yeah yeah okay. So the original thing is x squared y over x squared plus y. And right. So if we do that substitution, what do we get? We're going to get x squared cx squared over x squared minus c. And then x squared plus this. Oh, God. And hopefully that boils it seems a little, nicely. a little crazy. <laughs> I mean, we'll get a nice cancellation if we bring like the denominator here down there. Oh, that's true. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, <laughs> how do we, do that? <laughs> we would. I guess you could even phrase it like multiplying by x squared over c minus x oh, over x squared minus c. But oh yeah, we could just multiply both the numerator and denominator by that thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Do you want to okay, keep, cool, cool. Keep, keep it going, yeah, then? I can keep okay. It. Yeah, so x squared, and then we get like cx squared. Maybe in just in green, I'll just write that. So we're going to multiply by x squared minus c, and we're going to multiply by x squared minus c. And that should give us x squared, x squared minus c, plus cx squared. Uh, yeah. Oh, is this our equal de degrees now? Yeah. Holy crap, really? So we get cx to the 4. And in the denominator, we get x to the 4 minus cx squared plus cx squared. Cool. Oh, OK, and now nice. we're going to limit. Oh, man, that's so cool. OK, so this is x and what do we take? Uh, like cx squared over x squared plus c or something? Minus c, or but those yeah. Two things. yeah. That's so cool. So this limit's now going to be equal to C. Yeah, so I, I I don't know if the level curve thing works directly like that scientific, but you can definitely use that to inform your sub to do it the normal way that I see in a calculus class. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. Very sneaky. And that should work for any value of C that's not zero, really. Yes. Okay, but well, that's that's a neat one. Hey, a question. What's up? Oh, here I'll uh, I'm gonna I'll copy the uh, I'll see if, I'll see if I can copy the image and show you what it looks like. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe it doesn't come up. Oh no. Oh dang it. Did you just like? Did you really just roll another VIP sale, <laughs> Zach? <laughs> How are you so lucky? <laughs> Everyone's going to be a VIP pretty soon. I know. <laughs> Zach wants the QEDs, though. He doesn't want the VIP. <laughs> Whoa, that's a crazy function. It's kind of crazy around the origin there, isn't it? Yeah. Can we just use the level curve method and justify that it doesn't exist because C can be anything? I mean, normal level curve, C can be anything. So I'm, I'm not sure what you mean with that. Yeah, so scientific, the idea here is this work that Don did up top gave us a function in terms of y that we could substitute in. Actually, I can probably use the highlighter. So this work up here that Don did, right, gave us a function in terms of y that passes through the origin, right? So when x is equal to 0, y is also equal to 0. Now, that's important because we already have this other limit over here, right? This very first limit we did tended towards 0. And with this new function, this new path that we found, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm going all over the place here, Don. But no, it's, I, I'm okay. tracking. So yeah, so now if we substitute this kind of substitution in, now our limit becomes c. And so it's not 0. As long as c isn't equal to 0, then now we have all these other paths that uh, won't be zero anymore.
<laughs> Gamora, you redeemed VIP. You're already a VIP, Gamora. You, <laughs> you can't be two times VIP. <laughs> That explains the level curve. If x is equal to zero, then y is equal to zero. Is that reason I can substitute it on the limit? Uh. So the idea, with, so showing that a limit doesn't exist, you just need to find two paths through the ordered pair that give you different limits. So the first path, I think, Don, that you picked was like y is equal to zero. I think. Yeah. So the x-axis. Right, so we know that the x-axis passes through the point zero, 0, The second path that we were kind of prompted to solve, and, and the one that Don found, which is the cx squared over x squared plus c, that's also a different path. It passes through the origin, the point zero, 0, but its limit isn't 0. So since we have these two limits that aren't equal to each other, that's enough for us to know that the limit does not exist. And yeah, so if M is right, we can find paths for any finite C that we want. There are an infinite number of bad paths, basically. It's like a really neat way of doing like the thing that you initially want to do is you want you wanted to find a sub that gave you an equal degree. And it's like a neat way of actually finding that sub. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wasn't I wasn't kind of expecting that. Yeah. So I, I hope that helps you out scientific. Let us know if you have anything else on that. Um, yeah, that was a fun question. So there's two options here. We have another uh, series from Critical Thinking. And then Ruby puts some clarification. I think it was. It looks like it is just converting it into Cartesian, that cosine plus I sine thing. But maybe they need some help uh, translating the unit circle. Um. I see criticals here. I don't know. Ruby, are, are you still here? If we're hearing from critical and not Ruby, then we can just do criticals, maybe. Um, I posted a new room for us as ooh, well, Don. Good call. Eat it. So, Sophie, C is a real number. C is any real number. Yeah, exactly. So what Gamori said, any fixed constant C. And Gamori says, I love a good deal. 66% off can't be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> I did refund your channel points, so you can always use it next month to get your VIP next month. I agree, Fem. That was a really interesting, uh, interesting way to tackle a question like that. Mm -hmm. I've never really thought about it doing it that way before. Uh, so the only context that cr Critical posted here is, why is this D? Capital D. I don't know what capital D is. Divergent? What's the question here? Critical. Yes? Okay. Divergent. So why does this diverge? Um. Oh! Is this a test for divergence also? This might be a divergence test, yeah. Wow! Because <laughs> it doesn't converge things low. <laughs> yeah, this is... Okay, yeah, compared to we're just saying you never use a divergence test, but you just found one where it does. Yeah, I like Lowe's answer. That's a, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Gamora, you get VIP for one month on this channel. Um, so yeah, there's probably a different way to do this too. Like maybe you can make the comparison tests or limit comparison tests work also, but I think the test for divergence is the simplest if you're comfortable evalu evaluating a limit like this. Um, so the way that I was taught is that if you have an equal degree on top and equal degree on bottom, you can just take the leading coefficients of each of those. You can actually show with like lopitals or with some factoring tricks as well, but I was kind of taught as a trick to, to memorize. So you have uh, positive one over negative two, and that's the result for your limit. And so that's not equal to zero, so it diverges. But I'm sure the limit comparison test would work too with these. I, I think it usually does. Yeah, we'd have to be sneaky about how to pick stuff, but yeah. I agree with you. But your way is much, yeah, much much simpler. And so, 
Yeah, so critical, the way you want to think about this is in the long run, what we're actually doing, the limit tells us in the long run, we're always going to be subtracting it. Uh, right. So there's no way this can converge because we're always subtracting a half in the long run. Uh, incredible, yeah, please keep keep the questions coming. I love how this has become, we should have put, we should have like added critical thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Answering math questions with, with Don does math and critical thinking. <laughs> love, if you want to give a question too, please, please do. Oh God, how do I, there. So many tools. Oh, okay. I was just gonna like a for, for for fun question though. Uh, what type are you allowed to ask? <laughs> I guess like calculus is a safe bet for things that we both know. Yeah, Penbox has gotten there. Do a classical series question not based on here. I feel like Penn's gonna explain something, so I, I should go on mute. Um. Just rewrite the problem. Sorry for the random drawing done. I just had a question in chat. Oh no, you're good. I I wanted me to, so I wouldn't like interrupt you. Okay. Those currently working on group theory, stochastics, probability, and multivariate analysis. That's like three that different terrible. topics. Yeah. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I'm not That's, worthy. It sounds like a class I do not want to take. Yeah, I could, I may, maybe could study one of those things. <laughs> um so yeah and so i spent the task here is to find coverage of divergence and we can even find the sum for this one if we want um those are the three classes you're taking oh they're separate classes okay it's not all one class oh okay i thought it was like one class and i was like jesus <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so yeah, critical. I think if we just even do one little algebra step here, you might even see what to do. Um, it, like this series, as it looks right now, it's completely like, you know, I have no clue what to do with it aside from playing around with it algebraically. So let's look like we have this negative exponent here. And so when you have a negative exponent, you can make that a denominator. Um, and like, you know, you flip it and you make the exponent positive. So if I if I were to like this, do do you have an idea for what to do from here? I know those power laws get you every time, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> we're happy to keep on doing it. Go on, I want to see how you do it. All right. I guess we can do the same trick that we uh, just found for that other problem, right? Uh, we don't have to worry about the the index being zero. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we can just uh, pull a three or a pull a three from this plus one exponent, and say that this whole thing is equal to three times three over four to the n. So you have a geometric series. Absolute value of r is less than one. So this thing converges, and we can even find its sum using s equals. Oh, sorry. I'll write over here. Uh, 3 over 1 minus r. Which, if I do some mental math, is 12. Uh, you need to be careful with your numerator, right? Our, our I do. A is going to be 3 times 3 quarters. Oh my gosh, I did the... Ah, you're right. So close. Yet so far. That's... A nine. Uh, so yeah, I just made the mistake. We, I'm so used to geometry starting from zero that I forget. With n equals one, you do have to do you plug n equals one into this, so you get three times three fourths for the first term. Lowest thing, would you be able to look at a midterm to do? I kind of failed it during your first year. Bachelor of Science and it's probability. Oh yeah, uh, probability. 
I've sold my best, but we can probably figure it out. We could have some fun with that. Yeah. So we can type it out there in chat, or you can put it in my Discord. Oh yeah, are you going for much longer pants? Or like, I'm good to keep on go going to keep on, but I'm sure I'm not like keeping you. No, I got uh, 10, 15 minutes or so, and then I'm just I was planning on just raiding over your way. Okay. Yeah, if there's questions, I'll keep on going. If, if Peter's out, then I'll probably end as well. Uh, it's in Dutch, so I'll translate the question. Yeah, sure, Lo. Here you go, Zach. Math. You finally got your QED points. The Moroccan math person never replied, I don't think. Uh, unfortunately. Oh, wait, it was it was Moroccan math? No, so uh, the person who asked about Moroccan it was math... Morocco math. Oh, Morocco math. <laughs> no, like Morocco the country. Oh. <laughs> The person who asked about that oh, never got so back sorry. to me. No, I mean, Morocco math it, it sounds kind of cool, too. Uh, so yeah, that person never got back to me. Critical things actually a follow-up question quickly. Three. Also, I think you're on, you're on uh, 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 mute on my side, Don, by the way. Ah, sorry, I, I was muting, like, trying not to, like, interrupt you sometimes. And then, yeah, so, so yeah, it is Moroccan math, like the country Morocco. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was um, like, Morocco math? This could be fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds fun. The person uh, was on YouTube and they never got back to me, though, so... Unfortunately, we won't find out. Dang. Um, Critical is asking a follow-up question, though. S... I have I'm reading the notation here. Oh, it's not uh, 3 to the power of 3 over 4. I'm, I got, I messed up and I got lazy. Uh, let me rewrite it. <laughs> or yeah, Penn is writing it down here. So it should be, I think, uh, three times three over four, and then the one minus three quarters, I think? Yes. It should uh, be a multiplication. Yeah. Because A1 is three times three over four. Is that really... What do we nine nine oh, no, right. Okay. Or something? Sounds good, though. Uh, yeah, nine. Yeah. Hopefully, I, <laughs> that makes sense now. Critical my notation isn't... Too, too messy. Oh, is it probability time? Uh, yes. Lo just DM'd me a PDF. Uh, can we maybe do two or three of these? They're in Dutch. Did... Oh, okay, so I guess we choose a question and Lo will translate for us. I don't know okay, how we're going right. to choose them if they're in Dutch, but I'll, sh I'll show it at least on my screen here. <laughs> choose the hardest one. So, I also okay. put up a new board for you. Oh, cool. Uh, Lo's interested in question two. Okay. I'm interested in number two. Okay. Up gave to uh, us, no, some I'm might say. I'm going to pop out a chat because Discord's being weird. Can you throw me oh, back in? Yes. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully. Um, Great. Holy Christ, what does this say? La T N discrete stochast zin mint support. I'm, I'm reading like I'm Swedish. <laughs> uh, I thought it was so damn cool. I agree. Uh, but we have some kind of beastly formula that I don't want to be part of. <laughs> what does this say, Well, if you're interested in, in number two? Yeah, like what is that? Well, when you're saying probability, I thought you meant like, what's the chances that you roll a six on a on a die? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> We're getting a whole like crazy probability distribution here. Yeah. Like that's like that's a fancy one too. It's not even a normal one. It's an advanced one. Uh, let T be discrete, so cast and support tau. Our teachers hate us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I'm not sure I can comfortably answer this question, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. I don't know anything about stochastic probability. They got like a fancy T and everything. Discrete joint PDF. I mean, like, what's it's, the first question? Oh, I, I can't need, copy. I need to do this as a reading group, but we're doing group theory first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
this is definitely something I need to refresh is on like this, this kind of probability, but I definitely don't feel comfortable personally answering these kinds of things without a lot of help. Me neither. Um, so it's all, uh, underscore, I have an idea. So if you're able to translate um, A for underscore or time lock for someone might might have an idea here, but I, I don't think me or Pinson are going to have an idea. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a screenshot of this and post it in my Discord too if someone wants to like have their own copy to, to look at there. I, I don't know if we'll be able to help with it though. T and V are independent. That's nice. That means there's no covariance, I suppose. T and V are independent. I'm sure there's probably somebody who could help out in one of our discords on this. It would just need to be translated. Yeah. Right, like I'm, I'm thinking, like Zone might be a good person to tag on this. Uh, man, there's a couple other people I know that do really like advanced probability stuff. Yeah, I guess it's the translation that's kind of the issue. Yeah, like Lo, if you if you can translate this for us, even if you just type it out somewhere, we can probably at somebody in one of our discords and and make the magic happen. Yeah. How much I like to work on refresh? I'm totally out of it again. Oh yeah, if uh, <laughs> yeah, like if you don't use math, you kind of lose it. Try to make a PDF where it's translated. All right, S sounds good, Lo. Thank you. No, that's so true, Lo. Like I know that I've taken this class, but I took it like fifteen years ago, <laughs> so it's I can't I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my like advanced stats class covered this even. I remember learning about like PDFs and CDFs. I don't think we did stuff like this though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You think you're going to be going on for a little while longer? This feels like a pretty good place for me to to raid my viewers over into you, if that's cool with you, Don. Uh, yeah, I'll 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 keep on going for a bit. Awesome. I'm, I'll wind um, down and then uh, so I'm going to jump off of Discord and then I'll raid over into you. And thanks, thank you very much for for testing out the tag team mathematics. I had a lot of fun. I thought this uh, worked pretty decently well. Yeah, this is awesome. And uh, yeah, if you guys ever want to watch content like this again, definitely feel free to let us know. Yeah, this is this is this is something we we normally do like as a like a regular thing or um like or get other people involved too. So people want to see it, we can make it happen. And that way, we can try to make sure that all of the notifications that I have in Math Discord remain like under nine hundred and ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I think that one's going to diverge though. <laughs> All right, thanks right. so much, Don. See ya. Have a good day. You too, thanks. All right. What a Chad. Texting stuff was a bomb. Yeah, Fenbox, I agree. It, it's a lot of fun to like have help with these. I think it's wrong. Just spending... So I, I, I'm still go, 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 going with math here, but I don't know if I can go with this math. <laughs> uh, let me... I can try one thing. Uh, if you go back over to Google Translate. Ah, dude, why does this ever work? I, I I get an error that it can't copy paste. Group theory midterm, you flunked it. It was horrible. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Group theory, I can, I at least have a shot in hell of helping with that. I don't have a very good shot, but I just have a shot. Or, or I think people in chat are more familiar with group theory. Uh, let me put my my mug away. It's been empty. Okay. Actually, there's a bit less. Uh, so I'm not going back for the pens. Right now. Let me let's get some music going again. Oh shoot, I should get back to, to, to Ruby. Um I'll I'll do that in a second here. Cause I think Ruby's already out, so I that is my urgent to like uh, get back to. And I'll just get that music going. Let's see what you sent me.
Oh, okay. Minecraft music? Yeah, it's, it does sound like Minecraft. I think it's just relaxing, though. And thank you so much. That that was a, a a ton of fun to like collaborate. It really reduces like the umming and ahhing when I don't immediately get a problem. Like you know, one of us usually ha has an idea, <laughs> uh, which uh, is nice. Just being famous. So so damn cool. Oh, really? I, I I didn't even see. Um. Well, welcome in everyone. Why is the answer not twelve from your question? Oh, critical. Do I solve it open? I don't. Oh, did should I not have shown that? Low. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Pen. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, I saw this Excel drawer open. I uh, was just. Seen as a big city, yeah. As in the paper, uh, okay, okay. Uh, let me just quickly get to to, to criticals, um, cause I, that'll be a quick one. What was it like? Was it like this? A over one minus r. But the thing is, a is. Oh no, it was it was positive at this time. Uh, a is three times three fourths. Because um, n equals 1. If n equals 0, it's just 3. But since n equals 1, it's 3 times 3 fourths. We have to track on the bike. Oh, that's right. Uh, the, the, the Dutch love their, their, their biking. <laughs> uh, critical. Um, it's because of the starting index. The starting index was 1. Uh, which means that your first term A is 3 times 3 fourths. 5.5 kilometers, that's a pretty decent distance. Um, so that's why it's not 12. You should get 9. R is still 3 fourths, yeah. That's still the same. Oh, that's a, that's a funky 4. Uh, 3 times 3 fourths over 1 minus 3 fourths. You can solve that out. 3 times 3 fourths over 1 fourth times 4 over 4 equals 3 times 3 is 9. No worries. 16 per day? Jeez. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have anything to say on the stat stuff, but, um, a group theory success sorry it's, it's funny it's it's, it's 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 like it's like an it, it's an almost an english word except in english we have an extra s on the end <laughs> what is that word words shouldn't be allowed to be that long <laughs> is that college of natural something Okay, anyway, um, was there a certain problem with something that you want to see in particular low? I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm sure there'll be someone in chat who can. Natural sciences? All oh, right. It means you suck in Dutch. <laughs> Three or four? Okay. Can I figure out what's happening just from the math? Four was nasty for a question. Uh, we definitely need some translation in here. Oh wait, four goes all the way down here. Veal success. Um, it means you really suck in Dutch. Veal success. <laughs> no. Um. 
Wait, Dan is G cyclish? Poor Dan. Uh, which one? I mean, I'm down to look at either. I don't know if I can do either of these. I think it looks like proving second isomorphism th th theorem. Yeah, I mean, let's try four. Okay. Uh, I feel like I can understand a quarter of what's happening here. You have some kind of... Wait, how is this less than D? No, I, I, I understand a tenth of what's happening here. And, uh... Let me... Let me try to work some picture translating magic here. Let's try a deep L. Google Translate doesn't feel like cooperating. Um, ma, 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 ma. Oh, wait, this can translate PDFs? Oh, you have to make an account. F that. Uh, deep L doesn't do images. That sucks. We finally do this one. Hey, what? Oh, because it's not French. There we go. Yeah, I, I definitely need an English translation. We're going to prove the next theorem. If G is an abelian group of finite order N so that for all divide N follows the set. Oh, uh, deepl.com. I've heard that for a German, it's pretty good at translating. I don't know if it'll be good for Dutch, but... It's like we had a final test last year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this isn't very, uh, <laughs> it's not the best translation, but we can at least piece together what's happening now. Uh, if G is an abelian group of finite order N, so that for all D divides N, Then G is cyclic? Translation in the original? Uh, that's a good question, Fembox. Can I do that? Because, yeah, this is definitely not perfect. There's some symbols that got dropped off here. Uh, yeah. Um, I got this. We have technology. And by technology, I mean paint. <laughs> um, give me one second, though. I think it'll be able to for me to see them side by side as well. So, I can get this set up. I'm nearly there. Put that back there. Oh, I am blocking it slightly, aren't I? I'll deal with that later. Now, how do I get paint to show? by adding it in and bringing it down there and putting you over there, there. And then I need to make one of these smaller. I'll make, actually that's good enough as it is. Okay. I don't know if that's legible, but that's the best I can quickly do. Um, I'll, I'll I'll post the screenshot. I, po I post the original screenshot in the in my Discord, and I'll post the translation in my Discord as well. There we go. So so, so both these images are now in my Discord in the math uh, discussion. Match streamer skills. You know I do try. 
<laughs> oh, I should take away the uh, pen center from the title so I don't uh, bait the people. It worked. Ooh, let, let, let's see. Ooh. Uh, it didn't work on every part, but it it looks uh no. It kind of I <laughs> I I think the I, this might be a better setup that we have right now. I I can show this, but I the translation. They mangle the symbols even more, I think. Oh well. Um, so yeah, uh, low. I'm just curious, asking how you answered A. So I guess I, I think I'm just curious, I have a better idea of this than I am. I haven't gotten this far in group theory. So I, I I go with like low and thumbbox or you know people in chat over what I'm saying here. I have not studied subgroup yet. It's the next shit chapter though, I think, right? Should we take Ben Center out of the YouTube? Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Can I? I can. There we go. That's not really that important to, to do right now, but. Oh, wait, I should get out of the. Uh... Oh, okay, it already ended. Tessie did the worst song? Oh, dang. Cielo, uh, what do you do for, for part A, then? I guess that's what we need, need to know first. I, I, I wasn't sure of that either, Penbox. It kind of confused me. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's the cardinality. Okay. Or like, uh, Lo, I think the question is like, what did you think the, the answer was? Or what do you put on your test for, for the answer? Euler P function? Is that like the golden ratio thing? Or I don't know what the Euler P function is, to be honest. You only did one and two in parts of three. Oh, okay. No worries. In the meantime, you guys are working on that. Critical, yeah. Um, I'm still ta ta taking questions. Um, it's like Femlux and underscore maybe tackling this one, but um, I'm not really able to help with it, so I'm going to quickly type back to Ruby in my Discord, who was asking the question about complex variables but before. And then we can take a look at critical thinkings. Sorry, I need to bring up an image of a unit. Circle click. 
this person will uh, probably benefit from a visual. Oh, okay. I, 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 sorry, Pimax, if I oh, over-promised. I, I, I definitely just, I, 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 I can't do it for myself, so. <laughs> if no one in Jack can do it, then I think we just have to call it a loss, unfortunately. Yeah, sounds good though. I'm not sure who like I don't I don't think anyone in particular in the community is that good with probability to the level that you're doing. I can't think of another math streamer who I've seen do a problem this deep. So yeah, we'd have to call it someone in the community, I guess. I guess you love your pay, pay grade 10 bucks. Fair enough. <laughs> Is a nine good? <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know how you guys grade things. Oh, okay. 90%. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to be more clever. Ooh, that's a an interesting one. I know how to do it though. Um, critical. I'm going to take this view away in a second because I want to go to the critical question. Because I'm going to change how things look a little bit. Yeah, uh, th th thanks on a score for, for, for jumping in with that one. Uh, I guess I'm just going to do my math and paint for today. I, I'm not really set set up to do math on, on the whiteboard. Same as you could... Oh, dang. All right, um, let's go over and do a criticals question here. Critical, oh, I shouldn't write it up there. Critical has the series of sine of 100. Oh, pen, it was, it was really hard group theory. I, I didn't know how, how to do it. <laughs> Um, I just realized that it doesn't actually matter, but, um, probably more productive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe I, I, I don't know. Penn Center, the extended Penn Center is like group theory knowledge. He might be, be able to do it. Or even if you go to one of the um, abstract algebra like reading groups, there are probably someone in chat there who's really interested in algebra. Um, okay, so 
looking at this critical, the it looks scary because you have the sign of 100, and who the hell knows what sign of 100 is? <laughs> but we still remember the important things about sign, which are sign for any value of sign that you can name. Sign is always between negative one and positive one. Oh yeah, um, I posted the stuff in the map that discussion. I'll 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 tag you in there. And at uh, I added low in there too, so you guys can both see it. Sounds good. Um. Say that one more time. Yeah, sure. Underscore. So sign is always between negative one and one. Um, and graphically, like what I mean by that is the idea that when you graph sign, oh god, that's a that that sign does not care. There we go. It's always between positive one up there and negative one down there. So I, I don't care what this x is, it's always between negative one and one. And it's actually all we need to know for a geometric uh, series. Because geometric series only care if you're between negative one and one. So we can also say that negative one is less than sine 100 is less than or equal to one. And that's um, so we would say it converges because Sign of 100 is our R, and it's less than 1, or equal to, to, to 1. Um, and from here, it's going to look ugly, but you just plug it into the formula as normal to find the actual sum. Uh, the first term, so k equals 1. Remember, we're starting from index 1 here. So our first term is 1 over 1 minus R, which is sine of 100. Been watching mass streams on Twitch almost all day. <laughs> I appreciate you, uh, Fenbox. Streams are becoming popular. I mean, that's the goal. It's a small niche on Twitch, but I, um, I'd love to like grow it. Hope you all get rich and live to be a thousand. <laughs> I appreciate the kind words, but Fenbox. I hope the same for you. So A and R are the same thing here. Yeah, they happen to be the same thing. More probably has that they have living to a thousand. You know, that's technology advances. I don't know. Uh so you call this your answer even? Like, I don't really see how you can uh simplify it more. So when do you start up again? Oh yeah, oh, OB. You got your Wi-Fi now. Do you think you're gonna be able to start back up soon? Singularity is near. <laughs> um, so critical, I guess this is just your answer. One more tripod stream? Okay. Uh, like there's not much that you can uh, do with this. Don't rule out immortality, that's true. I don't know if I want to be immortal though. <laughs> what is those cosine? Exact same thing. Cosine has the exact same property of being sandwiched between negative one and positive one. Those computers coming probably next week. Ooh, that's awesome. That's soon. Tangent is different. Uh, do you have an actual example involving tangent? Because that that does not have the same. Uh, nice pro property. Oh, if you just have the exact same thing with tangent. Oh, uh, thanks for joining the Discord. Underscore. Uh, I'll at you where I posted the questions.
Okay. Um, so yeah, if you had this, uh, this probably won't. Oops, no. You're asking what if we had the same exact series but with tangent. Uh, so with tangent, you get no such promises being between... <laughs> negative one and one because tangent blows up to positive and negative infinity. I think I would hope you wouldn't be actually asked this question in reality. Um, what is 100 in radians? I don't know if it's even going to help. Like you'd have to hope that tangent of 100 somehow falls. Actually, I don't know. Uh, you have to have that tangent of 100 somehow falls like in this little area, or like, um, you'd have to hope it happens to fall in the bit that's between positive and negative one. So if you can somehow figure that bit out, then you can show it converges or diverges. I don't know how exactly you figure that out, though. <laughs> Bone thought Discord wasn't installed despite being installed. That's weird. So we get like plug this into Wolfram Alpha. In actually an actual like decimal approximation for tangent of a hundred, but this one isn't. Uh, can you do any funky comparison stuff? How about I can think of like you break on sine and cosine, half angle formulas for tangent. Yeah, there actually are. Not a bad thought. Tangent of hundred degrees is minus five point six seven. So hi, Phobos. Oh, it, it's actually, it's radians, though, isn't it? There's no degree symbol in the problem. Um, tangent of 100 radians. It is less than one. <laughs> uh, I'm not showing the screen. I guess I could. Sorry, my side was super janky for today. But I, I do get, if you do it in radians, then... This would converge. Um, the half angle for tangent. Yeah, tangent two theta. It's equal to tangent. Uh, where am I? Okay, two tangent theta over. 1 minus tan squared. So you could have angle it twice if you wanted. But that, that, I mean, you might still get something that's hard to evaluate, though. So yeah, I, I guess, Critical, the real answer is that I think this is a bit too difficult of a question to give to a, like a calculus student without allowing them calculators. Uh, the, I assume you're just kind of asking this question hypothetically in case it comes up, and my answer is that it hopefully wouldn't come up for you, but the idea of any, t of any problem like this is if you have something inside the parentheses that you're not sure what it actually is, you have to figure out some creative way to prove that it's either always between negative one and one or never or only sometimes. If it's always between ne negative one and one, then it converges and you just blindly plug it into the formula. If it's not always between negative one and one, then you say it diverges and you're done. So same thing if you had like um ln of five. I don't think I probably actually figure out because ln of x is equal to one at e. It's like you might have to do some kind of like you know, intuitive and uh, like analysis here, I guess. But should we can look at that ln example just to give you an idea, of like you know, in general, how how do you want to evaluate functions and think about their their properties? If you write instead it was ln of five, oop, not to the fifth to the k. Uh, ln looks like that. 
and we're concerned with the bit that's between negative 1 and 1. So we want to figure out where these uh, points start and start and stop. Um, so you would basically take ln ooh, of x is equal to 1, and ln of x is equal to negative 1, and figure out what our x is, and that will give us bounds for things that we would, and that we can figure out where 5 is in relation to those bounds. So in, in, the, in each case of these equations, you do e to the power of each side, and you get x equals e to the 1, or just e, where you get x equals e to the negative 1. Um, in e, this part you just have to know, but e is about 2.71. So um, this series would converge no calculator. <laughs> I have to like calculate, it's just, you know, memorization. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, and so you, you, want, you would want your R to be between E to the negative one or E. And I don't know what the heck, uh, it's one over 2.71, it's some small decimal. So like some small decimal or between 2.71 and 5 is not in, in this range so we'd say that that diverges. Prove that E is equal to that or not valid. <laughs> there you go, Obi. Pull those digits. So yeah, it, it, this is like a, it's kind of a neat way to throw a curveball to student, I, I, I guess. <laughs> if you want to make, make him think about like how functions actually behave. But this is kind of your pattern if you get something that... Uh, you actually have those memorized? I know there's a trick with um, like 1828, 1828. I, you probably wouldn't have told me about that, to be honest. Forty-five, ninety, forty-five. bright. Yeah, that's probably more explanation. That's more explanation than you really asked for, for, for critical, but it's trying to like, since you're asking like, you know, potential curveballs that could be th th thrown at you, that's one that came to mind for me. Really here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think you generally need that many digits of irrational numbers to get decent calculations. Um. Oh, duh. Tangent is one at pi over four minus pi over four. Or yeah. So it's still not trivial to figure. I mean, I. <laughs> I was just saying this is kind of hard to it, evaluate without saying what it actually was. But you're right. We actually could figure out where tangent will converge. Now, figuring out where 100 falls within that interval is still kind of annoying, but you could do it. <laughs> 39 decimals? Oh, okay. I mean, okay, well, that's like a huge scale, though. <laughs> and actually, even then, like, that's a, such a huge scale that you only need 39. I think that still seems like not that many decimals. Allegedly, yeah. So yeah, tangents, it's definitely like a very tricky one because you, the way tangent is periodic is, it makes it a bit difficult to, like 100 is way out here. It makes it a bit difficult to know like where the heck you are on the curve, so. <laughs> Um, yeah. Critical is keeping them coming. Oh, yeah, so I just saw your LN one. Actually, yeah, you only just uh, posted it now. Okay.
So ironically, we do have another series of LM, but this one it won't be quite the same thing. This is the test for divergence. Why? I have never seen a student have to do the test for like divergence on an actual homework problem. That's crazy. <laughs> I think that's super funny. I. Uh... <laughs> okay. This is diverges. Uh, so. Uh... Uh, the answer I gave you previously about the test for divergence not almost never being used. In your case, it's apparently wrong. Uh, because what you can do here... Take the most n goes to infinity of ln n squared plus 1 over 2n squared plus 1. Using limit properties... Uh, it's a little bit hand wavy for me to say that, but using limit properties, we can switch the ln in the limit. And this is our good old friend, the coefficient rule, because the degrees on top equal degrees on bottom. So it's ln of 1 half. And I don't care what ln of 1 half actually is. It's, I just know it's not 0. So it's a test for divergence. <laughs> ln is constant? Yeah. It's just ln of a constant. And uh, ln... As long as you don't have ln of 1, you're fine. Because ln of 1 is 0. In which case you need to find a different test. But ln of a half, that's not 0, so you're fine there. Um... I'm trying to think of uh, how you do it. You don't have that trick. Uh, it might be fine. I don't know. Could drive the expedition variance of the geometric Poisson binomial <laughs> discrete stochastic. You know, someone could. <laughs> I don't know if I could. Negative binomials harder. Yeah, I th I've heard of negative binomial. I don't remember what it's about off the top of my head though. Um, so yeah, critical. I guess when you see a series in your class, you may as well just like quickly see if you can figure out what the limit as n goes to infinity is, because it. I've never seen it actually come up on a homework problem. <laughs> the test for divergence <laughs> come up for you multiple times, which I think is fun. Oh, it might be that then. Oh. Um, but, I mean, I've, I've probably linked this to you a million times, but Paul's on my notes, they do have a whole page on how to choose what series. Uh, like you're trying to solve these blind. So like they have like a, you know, a step-by-step -step, like, Try this test. Try that test. Try try the next test. So if you're interested in just the general approach to series, it's a good one. Oh, really? Just all... I mean, I, I know that there's a... I, I don't know about all the relationships, I guess. I know like the normal distribution is basically uh binomial distribution, right? Oh, is this another? 
That's the University of Hawaii. That's kind of cool. Oh, like a whole flow chart. That's neat. Oh, and some practice problems from Stewart's Calculus. I bet this is actually the same thing that uh, <laughs> Crit uh, Critical is doing. Can I see the exact problem? Let's see. Or even any of them that Critical's posted. I have to show you this. Oh, nice. It's a nice chart. Yeah, I, I went to Hawaii Pacific University, not University of Hawaii, but I saw Hawaii.edu in, in the title. Uh, critical, I, I was going to the price problems, but it's a whole, uh, this is what uh, Public Stream posted in chat. It's a whole flow chart for choosing what tests to use. Change blades in Hawaii, it'd be nice to check it out a bit. It's awesome. Um, highly recommend Hawaii. Yeah, well, I um, went to... To, to university there. I'm from California and I moved back to California after, but for, for three years I lived in Hawaii. No wonder you're so chill. <laughs> How's the atmosphere there? It's um series. For sequence, you pretty much always just take the limit as n goes to infinity. This chart is only for, for series. Uh, the weather there is super nice. It's tropical, of course, so you don't have actual like seasons. You have like wet season and dry season. Um, it's kind of weird, but I mean, they're really that like the seasons in California aren't really that like drastic either. So, um. You haven't learned alternating series yet? Oh, you probably will soon. Alternating series are pretty uh, simple to deal with. But yeah, I mean, it's just like, a, like once you do learn, uh, you're, you're testing all the tools in the toolbox. Wait, why don't they say ratio test? Oh, interesting. They put it all the way down there. Which one is the most hard to deal with? Hmm... I would say comparison tests and limit comparison tests because they require you to be creative and random and, and well not randomly but be clever. They force you they force you to be creative and find a B sub N that works for comparison test and limit comparison test. Every other test is pretty procedural. You just check the, the boxes for the conditions. Um and then you just proceed with the calculation. Is there a lot of light pollution? No. Uh if if, 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 if you go to a beach at, at, at night, you can see so much compared to like here in California. Yeah, well, I, I should have been, I did nothing in Hawaii and I kind of regret it, but <laughs> I'm not sure why it does have some really nice like observatories. There's an observatory around here that I should just like, go to, right? Um, I'm saying you're lucky to see one star, I bet. This is the integral test for the most di difficult one. Yeah, honestly, the integral test almost never comes to mind for me. I I I, I do usually forget its conditions. Then we use a lot. Yeah. Oh, I have a DM on Reddit? You're, you're gonna go to sleep? Alright. Well, thanks for hanging out, Lo. Oh, the person got their answer. Okay. Mauna Kea. Um, oh, yeah. All right, see you, Critical. 
Um, I, I, I associate with the mountain. Is, is there an observatory on this? Oh, yeah, observatories. Dude, look at those things. It reminds me of um, Astroneer. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, underscore. It's kind of chilling anyway, so. I guess they're above the clouds, yeah. I, I don't know why it's the tallest mountain in the world. As in, measured from the bottom mountain to the top of the mountain. It's a longer climb than Mount Everest. But Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world because the like elevation is higher. Sign in over N converges? Oh gosh. Uh, we, have, we have a drawing from Zach. A me flag? I know my whiteboard's set up, so we have to be in paint. I that I mean that'll be an interesting one. Um Maybe let's draw the flag first. Um how should I do this? So I assume there's some kind of distinction as for that uh series. Alright, it's a sum. So it's not going to be the same exact uh, argument as sine x over x as x goes to zero. Wait. Doesn't that diverge? Sine x over x approaches one as x... Oh no, it's x goes to infinity. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Um... We could bend box, but that's gonna make it, or that doesn't help for convergence, as far as I know. Okay, a flag representing me. What flag should represent me? We definitely need DDM blue here. Wait. Ugh. Get that color. Dirichlet's test? Ooh, I haven't heard of that. Ch change to black, are you kidding me? Okay, there, thank you. Oh, good. Thank you, Paint. I have to right-click. Okay. Um, so I remember... Jed... A while ago, linked a. Um, I, I'm looking to Derrishley's tests after this, but um, 
Jed linked a video on state flags. And um, it's like Minnesota state flag or it was a really interesting uh, CGP gray video. And it triggered uh, like Minnesota or someone to change their state flag. And it was a really cool design. I mean, if I, sh I, I shouldn't like steal someone else's idea though, right? I, I do r r really like what they did though. Um, Whereas there, there's a lot of flags that, um, oh no, no. Okay. That's cool, bro. There's a lot of flags that have, um, if they're a square like that, they have like that kind of design in them, but you can actually like invert that. And I, I like invert the, the, the triangle. I thought it was like super neat. Able transform? Oh, interesting. How does one rotate in this piece of garbage program? Um, can I shit? No. Uh, can you just not? Ro oh, here. The rotate button, I guess. Uh, okay. I got this. Actually, I should uh, do it like this. There we go. I should. I want to get, get rid of this. Oh my god. Okay, no. Uh, redo. Just use this as our base. No, that's that's a weird proportion. I, I'm going to really obsess over this now. Okay, there's a reason you can't copy-paste that. You know what I... Uh, uh, oh god. No, oh my god, control plus that doesn't zoom in. I wish I, I, if I was using my, my usual art program, this would be a lot easier. Okay, there. That's what I wanted to to do. Jeez. Uh, vertical flip. That's all I wanted to, to do. <laughs> Paint is the best art program? Yeah, well. <laughs> Usually parts, but for sums? Interesting. It's like Nepal's flag before the reflection. Oh, really? Okay. It's not really lined up quite right. Um, it's not my problem though. Okay, there. Uh, what should be our secondary color? Um. How does that look? Terrible. It's a lovely pea yellow. That, so you know, that, that gold I kind of like. I, I mean, we're going to make this like, like we're, we're going to do more than this, but just to get like a basic, you know, design in the books here. Um... I, I, I want to get a symbol on this. This is a little, this is a little bright. I feel like my eyes are. Uh, dying. Um. Carved like a big sum and right carved like an integral. 
Yeah, it'd be cool to incorporate some kind of mathy thing in this, because I'm, I'm just doing, like, you know, colors. There... Is there a sigma in this? Wait. No, it's like a... It's, it's an inverted sigma. Dang it. Okay, if I uninvert it, we could have a sigma in this flag. That's gonna be so annoying to draw. Like... We could do a... a sneaky... I'm just gonna freehand it just for the sake of, uh... Showing it. Just reflect it. It's true. Oh God. Where where's my eraser? Oh, that that's not erasing. That's the opposite of erasing. <laughs> this freaking program. Okay, there. Uh, <laughs> erasant. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I've always really liked blue and yellow as a color combination. Although I think... I, I, I feel like I'm stealing from, like, Ukraine's flag now, but... <laughs> I, oh, wait, no, I do not want that last line. It spoils everything. We will do this. Um. Okay, can we sneak another, like, math symbol in here? Surely. I mean, this could even be like the end of the flag. Like, we just have a gap there. A rectangle. Yeah, I mean, rectangles are math. That's true. So another shape you can sneak in. I mean, we have like a blank canvas here, so it's almost like we can do anything we want. For the, like, the right side, or even like the inside, like we, like, you know, there has to be some kind of clever thing you can do with sums. This might be... Terrible. Or it could be kind of cool. But trying to represent like the idea of like infinite. Uh, I guess we're infinitely dividing like a right triangle here. With uh, perpendicular things. The DDM, I mean, I, 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 that's the first thing I thought of, but it felt kind of uh, like lame, I guess. Or like, like that, that's like the obvious thing. Oh god. I'm sure the rectangle has length, height, feet. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that, but it's so hard to do in paint. <laughs> Make it part of fractal so it's impossible to manufacture. <laughs> Um, I 
I don't know, I, I kind of like doing more like visual things than like just like writing letters on it. I don't know, like it's something to do with the upper left half here. We should remove all the G's, T's, and H's from those words. This is one where, like, I don't want to, like, think about it. London A, yeah. I agree, that's a lot better. I I don't have layers in the stupid program, so I wanted to go back and like make this half green. I couldn't do that. Ugh. How do you make it filled? I guess like that. Oh, actually. That's almost better. That, that I kind of like that. If we fix a. Uh... Oh wait! Oh no! The, the rectangle. Oh no! We have to. We have to fix it again. I just realized it, doesn't, it goes way more than halfway down. I could definitely make this a lot better than another program, but you know, we'll keep this rolling. Uh, because I'm too lazy to get that other program working on a uh, OBS right now. Also, I'm interested to see the uh, sign in over end thing. Lengths and height <laughs> with the four color th theorem. Oh, true. I mean, we could keep like playing with the idea of, um, Dividing things. This is an art stream now, by the way. And like infinite division of things. Ugh. Wait, what? You stupid program. Okay, fine. I'm just going to mainly use the paint bucket, I guess. So like we can take this and like alternate the colors by halves, which is gonna be really hard to actually like do precisely. But we can like eyeball it. Oh wait, no, we don't even need to do that part. Um It's like what and I want to do half and then half again. I. <laughs> you know what? This is not tur t turning out well. I'm just kind of doing things, and it's. The more things I do, the less I like it. Super tasks video thumbnail, really? But there is a way better idea than this somewhere out there. The bars were the triangles. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know if I should spend like for 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 this guy. I am curious about that that, that sign in over end thing. But we we <laughs> really. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, let me. Uh, I I I, I do want to quickly um. 
Oh yeah. Look at oh yeah. I, I I never watched a Vsauce video in my life, but that is basically it. Okay, well I I, I wanna use the same part over here and then do the stripe thing and just remove the uh the triangle entirely. And and then we'll uh look at that whatever thing we're gonna look at. Uh how did I make this? Uh ah. Uh oh, that's right. I I made the I made it facing that way, and then I flipped it. And for some stupid reason, I have to actually do this. Rotate. Lip. Okay. Good enough for me. Uh, no, no, no. Horizontal. Good. I don't know why I'm doing this, but by the way, it's, it's kind of fun to just like mess around with it though. Saturday, you know, who wants to do actual math on a Saturday? Okay. Well, there. Copy, paste. What? Okay. You're not allowed to copy paste lines. Lesson learned. It's completely. Oh my. Oh, good. I'm really glad I'm, I'm on the on the select tool. Stream is just me raging at paint. while also refusing to use a program that actually works. <laughs> there, okay. Hey, Anders. Uh, Zach d did a redeem to make a flag for me. Uh, what am I doing with my life? And so I've been playing around with different designs, and I think I like this, like, stripey thing. That I eventually thought of. I don't. I kind of want to do it. Should I do it vertically though, or like I also want to like flip the the bars? Would that be weird? I'm looking horns asked. Oh, the circle one. Yeah, I, I feel like there's some way that you can make a geometric interpretation for standard deviation. I don't know if that's actually true though. So we're saying you give all your students on the first day of class, really? I think this is this is a hard assignment. I <laughs> Oh, that's not a square rectangle. Uh I kind of want to make it, like, have the green be down here. I am just spitballing, though. Covering up part of the sigma. It's fine. What? Oh. No. Go. Go away. I want your text. Okay, so now we go halfway down. So wait, that's a half, that's a quarter. So now we want an eighth. No, eh, we can fix it later. Let's 
about an eighth. It's going to get real narrow real quick here, though. So wait. Okay, no, I just want to sure that someone didn't actually ask a question that I was like... Then they're just like waiting for homework help while I'm doing this. <laughs> Okay, we can make this work. Probably shift that down just a teensy bit. Okay. I still feel like it's missing something. I don't know what else to do with it though. You select postage stamps, and if I remember, Nepal had a lot of stamps that are really weird shapes. Yes, you're a million years old. <laughs> hmm. I feel like this has, like, two neat ideas. I feel like you could really pack a bunch of neat ideas into a math, like, flag, though. I don't know. I, I kind of want to take, like, take a little screenshot of this and put it in the Discord. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not unhappy with it. Um. <clears throat> okay, so... <laughs> what's up with sign-in over in? We have Dirichlet's test. Uh, Dir Dirichlet... Test. Small platonic solid instead of a sun. Uh, platonic solid. Uh, like, those are, they're like regular. Like, a sphere isn't platonic solid. Okay, yeah. That's true, yeah. Like, even like a dodecahedron, it's a pretty good approximation. Icosahedron? Jeez. If a sub n is a sequence of real numbers and b sub n is a sequence of complex numbers, satisfying a sub n is monotonic, limit of a sub n equals zero. Ico means five or. Oh. Heck if I know. Icosahedron. Oh, it doesn't have 20. Yeah, I don't know. The magnitude of the sum is bounded for this complex series sequence. Or, well, it's a series because you're, you're summing it. What? So, do you have to use the complex definition of sine? I, I do see how, like, someone said it was like integration by parts, but with a uh, series. I can see that relation. So I, I assume you would take a sub n equals uh, 1 over n and b sub n equals sine. Are we, um, this is a series of sine n over n, right? Yeah.
I have no oh really SPQ? I, I have no idea how like the, the roots work for, for that stuff. I mean, you can even just keep it. Okay, if say it's complex, but sign is also like you can just have it be sign. Can we prove the sum is less than some integer m for? Oh yeah, isn't it just declensions? What is a declension? I I imagine like declenching, like you declench your butt cheeks or something like. <laughs> Oops, I just hit the wrong thing. Let me, uh... Screenshot us. Uh, what am I doing with this? Well, I, I mean, for sine, that's like bound seems kind of easy to make because sine is at most one, so we could bound it above by n. Normally, the opposite. Are you saying like people normally take the opposite choices for a sub n and b sub n? That seems to that seems way more natural to me to use sine for this. Because you can say it's just less than or equal to n. Oh, never mind. That's be universal. So maybe that's why you have to. Uh... I, for, some, I, I, for every positive integer n, I misinterpreted it so you can make it depend on n. I'm around a language with declensions. Cheeks are about to be clenched. <laughs> Uh, okay, so it's probably not... Well, maybe it is realistic with sign, just not in the way that I'm thinking. Um, with 1 over n, can we bound 1 over n? Well, 1 over n diverges, to, doesn't it? So we can't possibly find an M. Uh, like the, I think the choices have to be like this, because 1 over N is never going to fulfill the condition for this thing, I will think. Um, all right, well, let me keep thinking about it, and then I'll ask for, for him. So... Can we find some universal bound for sine? Like it, it is gonna. I mean, we. It's so weird with sine, though. You don't really know how it's gonna behave when you're not. Like it's not. If it was like sine of two pi n, you definitely have something to work with there. Because that's gonna follow the period of sine. This is gonna be jumping around different parts of sine.
I'm thinking about things like um, think about the actual terms of the series and if you can do anything. Like use a half angle on sine of two to the way it's sine of one, but I don't think you get anything that's helpful there. Um Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I'll take a hint. Underscore. I guess I did second the absolute value. Well, I don't know. If only the sum was geometric. Oh, is it only the same hint that I, or the same thing that I was showing to like critical before? Or oh wait. Is it the complex definition of sine? Because it will be... Oh god. How does this look again? Something like that. Let me... I, I should Google this. I got it right, except for the minus two i. Wow, I'm I'm impressed. Oh, and and thank you, zone. Yeah, I don't, they they would you would never put a, a negative sign down there in a formula. Okay. <laughs> so it says we are technically concerned with the magnitude of this complex number. Only at the very end of the sum. But. With triangle inequality, we can maybe bring the sum inside. It might not be a helpful thing, though. I, I don't remember how that inequality would work. It might go the wrong way. I think more importantly, we can write this as two separate geometric series. Right? Okay, how the triangle inequality work here? This thing is going to potentially have cancellate. I assume the comp I assume the triangle inequality goes for complex numbers. I'm just gonna take that leap of faith. <laughs> if the absolute value is on the outside, we're potentially gonna have cancellation on the inside, giving us a smaller number. So this thing would be less than this thing, which I think is the wrong way. Like, if we wanted to bring the absolute value bars inside here. So I don't know. Wait, is that helpful? Yeah, we're trying to bound it from above. Well, I, I still don't know if it's helpful, but I think this is... In terms of the inequality, we're still doing okay. I'm out of room. If I resize it, is it going to resize the image? I think it is. Um, let's bring this up here. A normal, another, oh, really? Am I not on the right track? Another formula linking sign in E? Euler's formula. But that has a cosine as well.
I'm looking at the Wikipedia, the Wikipedia page for Sign right now. So I can show what I'm I'm looking at. So I don't see nothing with E in this little list here. But is sign represented in Euler's formula? Oh god. Well, the sine theta is the y, basically, the y co co coordinate of your like vector, or your imaginary component. If you were to actually graph this, is it a geometric argument, or like? Imaginary part of Z? Okay, yeah. Or not equals, that's not... I... R e to the i theta. It's linear? Oh! <laughs> I did not know that. Okay. I barely ever use like the imaginary and real like operators. Okay. Um... So what do we have instead? We have I M R E. Well, R. Is is R one? Can I can I say that R is one? It'd be nice if R is one. <laughs> I'm going to say R is 1. I don't know what's right. Like that? I hope. I mean, the point of linearity is that you can switch these around. Saying yep, okay. Uh, so you have the sum of a complex number now? <laughs> so, is e to the i less than 1? I don't know how you evaluate that. I guess that's the question. Remember your first hint. Wait, I, I guess, yeah, that's why I'm thinking more. This is a geometric. I guess it is. If R is 1, this is geometric. I don't know why R is 1, but... Yeah, E to just I... Yeah, the magnitude of that complex number. Finite sums, true. And the formula for a finite sum is slightly different. Uh, what is the formula for a finite sum? Let me Google it. Geometric series uh, sum. It is... A1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Oh my god. Right over here. 
Oh, I'm my cam is blocking that. Oops. I forgot. Sorry. That stuff was hiding behind me. Um What was this? I uh oh, let's see Anders. That's my thinking noise. I, I shouldn't have to explain myself there. That, that's very clear what's happening. <laughs> it helps me think to make weird noises. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I just make a lot of weird noises. If R is not equal to 1, I'm saying R is equal to 1. Or no, I know, am I say am I saying that? Yeah, I am. Uh somebody should clip that. Hey, hey, well, Andrews is on it. Um so I just realized this one says R is not equal to one. And isn't the magnitude of each of the I theta one? Isn't if R is one, isn't it just equal to N? Or like A one times N? Thinking like a zombie? <laughs> well, I mean, the ratio is E to the I. But, like, it, ratio is one, we're on the unit circle. So, like, this formula is, it, apparently it's not valid for R equals one. Actually, well, that, that, that does cause a bit of a, you're dividing by zero in this formula if R equals one. <laughs> Oh, wait. Okay, the magnitude of this complex number is 1. But it itself is not 1? I guess so. It would have to be... I don't know. How does... <laughs> It'd be e to the i pi, or e to the 2i pi is 1. Dang it. Uh... <laughs> Okay. A1 is just 1 here? Oh no, 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 no. A1 is e to the i. Okay, it's the cos i1 plus i sine. I don't know what that means, but 1 minus e to the i and I, I guess we can apply the formula. Wait. That end does not go there. Uh, okay. Is it going to be helpful to add, like, distribute the numerator? Is that all that's done? Yeah. Now, what, what the heck is this? Or do, do we even want to keep it like that?
The imaginary part of e to the i is sine of 1 is less than 1. No. <laughs> Can we get rid of it? Like, we don't, I can see what Pinbox is saying, but, like, we don't have just e to the i here. Can we take imaginary part of each of these terms individually? Is Does linearity let us do that? Like, you make it imaginary of the numerator, imaginary of the denominator, and then imaginary for each of them. That is linearity, isn't it? So like, can I just say sine 1 minus... Good. Oh, that that's fair, Fembox. Like, can we say that? I don't know if that helps. I feel like I didn't do that right. Like, you can't just do it of each thing individually. It doesn't distribute? Okay, okay. Okay, so how can I... If z equals a plus bi, how can you compare the modulus of z and the modulus of imaginary? Well, the mod modulus of z will be greater than modulus for imaginary z, right? Or equal to? So oh then we get this. Ah. So we're only concerned with bounding it. We don't care about the exact value. Okay, so we, we have to get rid of this n. That's the only issue here, right? Can we rationalize or, you know, get rid of the i in the denominator? If we multiply it by, uh, what do we multiply it by? How would you conjugate the denominator here? Do we even care about that? Or are we just bring things to sines and cosines? Hmm. God, really? Okay. That I get for trying to keep things neat. Okay. Um, the empire was alone somehow. Maybe actually we can just back up a bit. I mean, I assume the answer is yes if you're saying that. So let's. I mean, I guess there's two different ways that it could be alone. No, is there? No.
Like, that's a little alone. I don't think that helps us. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm stuck here. Can you break this into two pieces? <laughs> like, triangle inequality? So that would work, I think. Uh, so now we can somehow, can we somehow name something that's greater than e to the i n plus 1 over 1 minus e to the i? Cause yeah, I mean, we. Mm. Modulus of quotient. Oh, I don't know that. What's a uh, complex number modulus of quotient? Oh, you can distribute it. The hell. I don't know you could do that. Okay. Um... Quotient of moduli now, yeah. So, like, this first one is one. Like, can we just start evaluating? Uh, when you have one minus e to the i, what, what, what is that? Isn't that going to take some math to, to work that out? Yeah, the other one is, I guess by the same logic, the other numerator is going to be 1 as well. But for the 1 minus e to the i, do you have to, uh... The denominator is non-zero? Well... <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean... Don't, we still need to name an m, though, don't we? Does m have, doesn't m have to be real? Oh, m is just some constant, I guess. They don't say it's a real constant. This, this feels kind of unsatisfying though. I don't know. I kind of want to know what this is. <laughs> the modulus complex is real. Oh, 
Well. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah. Okay, well, if you're saying it's not important, I'm going to Wolfram Alpha it then. Okay, yeah, I was thinking, like, you have to set that up, which I guess is kind of terrible. Okay. <laughs> so, it's that irrational number. Um... So I'm just going to say the modulus of 1 minus e to the i is equal to some constant c, where c belongs to real numbers. So we have bounded this above by 2 over c. Oh, I'm not showing my paint. See, so yeah, uh, I, I'm just saying that 1 minus e to the i is equal to some real constant over uh, here. Um... So 1 plus c, or 1 over c plus 1 over c is equal to 2 over c, and that's our, that is our m that's over here. You know, it's 0.9 something, what whatever c is. So I guess we've, I mean, we haven't done the limit of a sub n equals, I, that, that, that's easy. I, I guess we did it. Okay. Dude, that's a... <laughs> It's quite the problem right there. And I feel like it's actually... If I was more used to complex variables, I feel like I would have had a much easier time with this. Or complex numbers. How the hell could it help? That, wait, are, are, aren't we done, underscore? This is M. No? Oh no, I thought we I thought it was the, I thought it was the entire problem. <laughs> okay, I I don't know then. I thought I... <laughs> Part one out of two? Oh my god. Like what? What? What is there left to do? Yeah. Like, haven't we proven that? I mean. I, I didn't show that 1 over n is monotonic and limit goes to 0, but I feel like that's pretty simple. And I think, I thought we just found m. So I'm confused on what else we have to do. Wait, are you saying I should have to prove Dirichlet's test? <laughs> I wasn't part of the deal. W would you want me to do... this stuff down here? <laughs> like, actually prove it? None. It's not needed. I. So, if you don't assume Dirichlet's test, are you saying there's something else to do here? I. Is there an easy way for me to see the idea? Or if you can explain it to me?
Hey, Stuki. <laughs> Wait, are, are you a tier 3 sub? I didn't even notice that. What the heck? Did that show up on my feed? Like, I only just now noticed that, like, gold ring. <laughs> Well, either way, thank you. Uh, no, yeah. I... Oh, well, holy crap, Stuki. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um. But no, I, uh. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I'm having a, a, a ton of fun. We were just working on, um. For fun, I'm just going to show me, uh. The series of sign in over n proving that it converges using Dir Dirichlet's test. And uh, obviously, I had to have every step to explain to me, but we did apparently do half the problem. I thought it was the entire problem. <laughs> I'm just sort of explaining the, the other part. But uh, yeah, thank you again, Stuki. The idea is to call b sub n equals sum k equals 1 to n of sine k. Yeah. And notice sine of n is equal to b sub n minus b sub n minus 1. Is it? Um, where do I make room? <laughs> we need our identities anymore. You go over there. Yeah. Um Saying b sub n equals some k equals one to n sync. I like sync. I don't, I'm, I'm intentionally not going to put parentheses there because I think sync is funny. Sign. Oh, what? Mm. Oh, b. Oh, okay. I see now because of the, uh, of the summation. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, replace into the series and split the sum. Rearrange stuff. Oh wait, replace into- oh, what? So, we're talking about this over here? Like, we're gonna have a series of two series? Like, Well, we can't use K again. Uh, no, yeah, we can use K there. You always keep B. Well, then I'm, I'm really confused on what to do. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, okay. Maybe... So you do use the series, you just keep, keep it with B? So this would be b sub k minus b sub k minus 1. Yeah, we we got the, the bounded part. Um, well, when I say we, I mean underscore spoon fed me the bounded part, but... <laughs> I guess we're getting some of Sign's formula because if we, if we we don't assume Dirichlet's test is what underscore said, then we have to do this part. So yeah, I mean, I, I like we when we did the boundness, I thought that we you know, the job done, 
we've met all three of these conditions. Say so the entire problem with sine over n converges. You meant the original series. Oh. Oh gosh. Okay. Um. What? <laughs> you can tell when I first started writing, I was so confident that it wouldn't take that much work that I wrote super big, <laughs> and then I write smaller and smaller. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Sum n equals. Oh, yeah, we didn't really put explicit bounds, did we? Are we doing it from n? equals one to big N. We're still doing partial sums. Yeah, I, I think now underscore just wants to torture me. <laughs> no. Um, if this has some kind of interesting like implication, then it'd be cool to see. So b sub n minus b sub n minus 1 over n. We're supposed to get a telescoping series. Uh, so you're saying split it into two separate sum, sums, rearrange stuff. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making fun. I am genuinely interested in, in, in seeing this. I feel like I've made previous teachers have to grade things that are worse or, or organized than this that I'm writing here, so. Okay, so you're saying we split this up into two series, uh, I think. Replace into the series and split the sum, rearrange stuff. I mean... Should we me see how to conclude? Okay. So we split it into two series. So are we getting... Everything's going to cancel except B sub 0. Or you're going to have B sub... I don't know if you want to cancel things, but... If I were to cancel things, we would be left with b sub n over big N minus b sub zero. I don't know if that's a good I, I don't know if that's making things if that's prematurely simplifying, but Beware of the shift in indices. I thought I accounted for, for that. Maybe I didn't. Oh, this isn't that easy. It's not telescoping, is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It's fair. Because the denominators are offset. Unlucky. Um, within each of the sums? Uh, when it's just sign of an integer, I don't know, does that happen? It was kind of like 2 pi k. I could see that, but... 
Unless I'm misinterpreting you. There's no telescoping at all. Minus B sub zero plus B sub one. Oh well. It's worth a try. Uh so that's gonna be B sub two over two minus B sub two over three is B sub two over six. Wait, over two. Isn't it like triangular numbers or something? Is that that should be plus, isn't it? Or I don't know. I don't know what triangular number is. To be honest, now I, I, uh, two six. It'll be b sub 3 over 3 minus b sub 3 over 4 is b sub 3 over 12. If I point at every which way. Uh, how is that progressing? Times 3 times 2. Oh god, I don't see the pattern there. Or times 2 times 3 times 2. Did I make a mistake? Some display is a change of index to have both sums with a B sub n. Oh, n factorial! It is factorials. Okay, nice call, Fembox. The first term is negative, which kind of disturbs me uh, on a very deep level. N plus one factorial true. It's not factorials? Four times three times... Oh, wait. Mm. Wait, three times two, four times... Oh, you're right. It'd have to be 24 for that last one, not 12. It's a good thought, though. Um ugh. N choose two. It could be. Oh God. Paint. Uh, you know what, I... <sighs> Goodbye, bounding. So sometimes you have to make hard decisions in life. In this economy, we just can't afford more paint canvas. Uh... Misam, over on YouTube. Hey, I'm doing good. How about you? Welcome in. Um... You'll see what it is when you change the index in the second sum. Was I premature with doing this whole thing? Do you have to change the index in the second sum? Okay. So let's 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 back up to that stuff, I guess. I feel like it it's bad. Like they're already on the same index. Are we saying we want to make it match with, um, make the B sub N match? So you would want to, we want to do, uh, N equals zero. <laughs> not infinity. So not infinite. I don't think, I don't know. Uh, B sub n over n plus 1, right? But now these can't interact, can they? Um, oh, we can take the first term out. Is that what we do? I feel like it's bad when I stray from underscores. Oops. Beware the top bound. 
Really? You have to do... Ah, uh, I guess you do. No worries, Fembox. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out. I'm probably not, not going to go for that much longer anyway. I appreciate it. So I guess, I assume we want to get these back to be on the same starting term, so we want to pull n equals 0 L. Hopefully I'm not straying too far from underscores wisdom though, because this is my, my own thought. <laughs> Oh, but then now the top index is wrong for them to interact. <laughs> we could do a plus minus thing. Like we can plus and minus the big N term. You know what? I I'm going to go down this path and underscore if I'm completely wrong and stop me. But let's see. Uh, see if we can do this. So now over here, I'm going to do plus b sub n over n plus 1, minus b sub n over n plus 1. I assume the goal is to get these theories back combined again. So bring the matching terms is good? Okay. So we, we're going to bring this minus inside of the sum. So it can go up to n. No, wait, yeah. Right? <laughs> and then the plus b sub n is just going to hang out. Oh my god, the sun is shining right in my eyes. Get rid of top term in first sum. Oh, that's probably a better idea. So yeah, we'll take out the nth term from the first sum. Uh, Misim over on YouTube is saying, let f of x be reevaluated the function of a variable x such that f prime x takes both positive and negative values, and f double prime of x is greater than zero for all x. Shows a real p such that f of x is an increasing function x for all x greater than p. That sounds like an analysis question. I think I can figure that one out. Me, Sam, just let me get to the bottom of this question that I'm doing. Um, I'll probably paste over to the switch chat too, just so I can have it handy. I will definitely take a look at that. Just um, I, I don't want to finish this train of thought uh, quite yet. Hey, scientific. So we're going to have, we can now combine these two sums back together. We need to get a common denominator. I. Oh. Are we going to get a cancellation? The bees are going to go away? Um, and the inside of the sum? Oh, no, no, no. We still have a piece of n on top. Never mind. Um... Can I fit this last one in here? So you end up with p sub n over n n plus 1 plus p sub n over n minus p sub 0. I 
I don't know what we do with this. Perfect, okay. Glad to hear that much. And Wall Street Jed, nice. So can we... <laughs> what can we do with this? Pizza Ben... The, light the lighting is weird. It's sunset right now. West is really that way? Oh, I guess it is. West is that way if you were curious. <laughs> um, so I, I guess we, we got to this thing down here. I, I don't know what we do with it though. 10 15? Yeah. It's freaking daylight savings time. Um, I'm I'm starting the Mesium's question, so I feel I I don't make Mesium wait for longer than I have to. Or, or you see the series of Beast of Bennett? Okay, so yes, yeah, so let's see if we can uh, I guess hopefully get to this. See the series with Beast of Ben in it? Uh, I <laughs> it has a sub. It has another summation in it with sine of k. Do we? No. Does it converge? Uh, if you removed the B sub n, yeah, because you can compare with the P series with n squared, but with the sock, it's like. We still have this um sum to sign over here that I don't know what you do. Like the beast of being the numerator, I don't know what you do with that. Like how do you Is this where we use the bound that we found before? Like you bound it by a constant, so it's going to converge? Maybe? Ah, okay. So Okay, based off the result that we got before, we can say that b sub n is less than or equal to 2 over c for the c that I defined. Uh... Oh, Misim, we're doing like a harder version of that problem. This is what the series sine n over n. Uh, <laughs> actually, I mean, sine x over x isn't a joke either, but... Um... So you can compare. Well, right, so if we know what converges. Okay. That's nice. How does that help us though? Or is that the entire point that we just want to know that it converges? I I I, I forgot what the point of this is. If I ever knew it in the first place. It seems like does it have to do with uh? We basically just did this. Oh wait, you may have, okay there. Now you can see my cursor, like that line there. Okay. You 
equals to your third term. What was my third term? Minus b sub 0? Or to my three terms. Okay. Oh! If you prove the three, two, the three terms <laughs> converge, then you're done. So, okay, we've shown this, the, that one converges, and then the other... The uh, b sub 0 is just a constant. B sub big N over big N. I mean, N is finite? Is that the argument that we can make? Or, I mean, no, that's still a... We, we, I mean, do we bound it with the same thing? So it should converge? Okay. Okay, well... That is neat, underscore. Thank you for being patient and showing that to me. <laughs> um, I don't want to make Misim wait anymore, so let me start looking at, at Misim's question. The uniform bound is used twice? That's nice. Uh, I'll keep that work down there in case you want to like discuss it more, but let me like start... ...working on Misim's question here. I, I kind of got to draw some stuff out if I'm going to be able to solve this, though, me, Sim. My, my analysis is, like, just okay. I'm not that, like, practiced with it, I would say. Oh, no. You can't... Uh, if I hold shift first, does it lock me in? It doesn't. I want to scale it in a way it's not going to look that bad. Ugh. Okay, fine. You're also very patient. Well, I think it's easier to be patient uh, if you're not the one teaching. Okay, that's gonna be. It's gonna have to do. Let f of x be a real valued function of a variable x such that f prime x takes both positive and negative values. f double prime is. So this thing is concave up. For all x. So does that force this thing to be parabola-ish? That's kind of my thought here where um Actually, f double prime is the rate of change of f prime of x, right? So if f of prime, or if, if f, okay, okay, okay. So f prime of x implies, or f of prime of x, uh, how, how, how should I write this? f prime of x being greater than zero, or sorry, f double prime of x being greater than zero implies f prime x is strictly increasing, right? That's just how a property of der der derivatives. Um... And so now, we want to, so our end was, our end goal is to get where f of x is increasing. Uh, so we want to figure out. If f of x is or f prime x is strictly increasing, um, we need to use the fact that f prime x is strictly increasing, and that it's we need to be more specific than just sometimes positive and sometimes negative, 
if it's strictly increasing, then at some point it must well actually f of x it, it, it must there must be it must start being negative and then become positive and never anything else. Let's reflect the phrasing of the question back at it. Uh, takes both positive and negative values. It must be that f prime x is greater than zero i guess for all x greater than or equal to some number p where p is a real number just some real number we don't care exactly what and because otherwise it wouldn't be strictly increasing, right? Assume that prime x is positive for some k, then it must be positive for x squared to be equal to k because it's strictly increasing. Yeah, me sim, that's my idea here. And I think that that's actually like that's the that's basically the entire proof right there. Like I'd write one more conclusion to that sentence, and then I call it good. F of x is increasing for all x greater than or equal to p. Uh, what do they mean by f prime takes po both positive and negative values underscore? I think they just mean that um, it can potentially, like, f prime x can potentially, like, fluctuate. Like, it goes up and down. But then I think I show in the problem that it's strictly increasing, so it can't be that crazy. It must be something like that, where it's only negative one part and only positive in the other part. Or can we do it this way? Assume h of x equals f prime of x and use um, LMVT? Something mean value of the theorem? I, uh, LMVT. Yeah, it was also uh, uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem. Oh, it's just the same thing as mean value theorem. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if we should use mean value theorem Uh, exactly that underscore, yeah. It has at least one negative point and at least one positive point. Um, so I, I was wondering if we, could, if we could use mean value theorem because there's so many derivatives involved. Um... It might be possible. Uh, let's try it. Because I, 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 I honestly, it might be better to, to use a mean value theorem because I kind of did that here without actually saying it. So the mean value theorem would say that F double prime at some point c, right, is equal to f prime at some point a minus f prime at some point b 
over a minus b. Oh, I should have switched my b's and a's. That's gonna annoy me. <laughs> Where A is less than or equal to C is less than or equal to B. Um, and so if we know that um, F double prime of C is greater than zero, B greater than A. Oh yeah, is this uh, strictly greater? It probably is, right? I already uh, close out of my tab. I think if they're equal to it's kind of... Yeah, okay, it is strict. Yeah, so I this might be a more... Like, my statement here might be like a leap if we don't use the mean value theorem. So this actually, this might be a good step to include. And then you can use my same ar argument here. Uh... Which implies f prime x strictly increasing. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, all that matters is that it's like if if you if you i i guess if you if it that's true you, the mean value theorem as stated does only do the initial function in the first derivative so you, we could do your idea this is where i'm not sure like how rigorous you're supposed to be um we could absolutely take h of x equal to f prime x if we want to if we want to be safe here and just say that um h prime x is equal to or not x but uh c equal to um h of a minus h of b oh my god i keep doing the b's and a's And then you can remember what H means in unsub things. Uh, that, that might be like te technically a safer way. I um, I would hope that what I wrote above is also fine, but yeah. The clip was reproducing in loop. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, no, sorry. That, that, that's what saves the day. I, sorry, I think you wrote that a while ago and I, I didn't react to it. Um, so yeah. Me say my analysis, like, <laughs> I know the general ideas, but I'm not always, like, that good with actually the um, execution. Uh, so I, I think if you're being safe, you would do the H thing. No, uh, yeah, and, and, and no worries, me sim. It's uh, the whole time, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, cool. It's kind of a, a nice little uh, analysis question. <sighs> um, I'm probably going to try to wrap things up here, though. Um, 
Are there any... Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we got friends who are on. We got Mary and we got Talos. Um... Actually, uh... So yeah, I, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream. So people over on YouTube, I appreciate y'all for being here. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday. I'm going to cut the YouTube stream off here, though.